Good evening, Three Star. This is Two Echo One Hotel Whiskey Echo, and we are about to start the Saturday evening Top Talk Net. But before we do get rocking and rolling, we're just going to customary as we do check to see if there's any emergency or priority traffic on the network before we get everything started. So if there is any emergency or priority traffic, please let us know now. Okay, nothing heard. This is to HWE and good evening. And welcome to the Saturday Night Top Talk Net. Uh, my name is Oscar. I'll be your net control. And my QTH is the city of Southend-on-Sea in the county of Essex on the Thames Estuary. And tonight you are in for a treat because we've not just got one or two, we have three special guests that will be joining us to talk about amateur radio in space. That's right. Tonight's topic will be amateur radio in space. And it is an interesting one. It's one that definitely fascinates me and I enjoy talking about it, and hopefully you do too. Uh, give you some quick statistics, actually, uh, about this topic. Uh, the first amateur radio transmission from space dates back to 1983, and that was 38 years ago. I know that well, because that's when I was born. So that's how long there's been transmissions of amateur radio anyway, for 38 years. And that was when astronaut Owen Gareth took to the airways from the Space Shuttle Columbia. So there we go. If anyone didn't know, that was the first uh, transmission of amateur radio in space. But obviously there has been satellites around before that, uh, you know, and very strangely named after me as well. No coincidence, I assure you. Excellent stuff. So we're getting our guests on at about 10 o'clock. That's when we normally... Uh, get everyone on, and then we have a bit of a chit-chat. So before then, we've got 30 minutes just to warm everyone up, get all the systems going, get all the uh, connections connected. So let's see who's out there. Let's see if there are any early check-ins to get their names on the list, and we'll see who wants to join the net this evening. Let me just take a pause. 2E1HWE. This is the Saturday night top talk net on the Freestyle Network. As I just mentioned, tonight's special subject, or the subject of tonight's net, is amateur radio in space. So if you've got a story, uh, or you've got an experience you wish to share with everybody, we'd like to hear from you. Please do call in. Let us know if you've had a contact into uh, the big, dark area we call space. It'd be very interesting to hear uh, your story if you have one. Or even if you haven't got one, not a problem. It'd be great to have you call in and check in to the net as well. Uh, there will also be an opportunity for anyone to ask a question uh, to our panellists uh, after as well. If there's any technical questions or anything like that they want to know, I'm sure one of the three guests may be able to help you with an answer. All right, well, further ado, let's see who's out there. Let's get the check-ins going. And uh, if you just bumped into us, we are on NetLogger. So if you want to see who's checking in, get on the NetLogger app and you'll see your call sign there. Uh, or if you want more information on the Freestar Network, the URL is freestar.network. Yep, that's right. Nice and simple, freestar.network. And everything's on there, the nets, uh, the connections, all the uh, useful essential information you can find on the website. So if you could come with your call sign. Uh, let me know slowly and phonetically the call sign just so I can uh, write it down. And uh, don't forget to leave the important three second gap if you could be as kind. All right, QRZ, QRZ. Let's start the top tool net, please. Let me know who's out there. OK, three. Good morning. Two, Echo Zero, Kilo Bravo Zulu, Scott Funchy, OK. Two E zero KBZ. Hello, Echo Zero Fox Truck. Now we're in Fox Truck. Show us voice. Okay, there's quite a lot of bubbling there, but I got a VK station. Uh, the VK station. Let me have the call sign again, please, because uh, someone doubled with you. Uh, the VK station. Uh, go again, please. Over. 
Yes, John VK three HJQ Victor Kilo three Hotel Juliet Quebec QSL. Yeah, QSL QSL got you there VK three HJK two E zero KBH. Then I think it was two E zero FBF. I think that was right. Is there anyone else, please? Let me know. Mark on Bravo and your kilo, Chris and Chatham. Okay, and also Chris there, M1BIK. Excellent stuff. So we're just warming everyone up. And tonight, as you probably know, we are talking about amateur radio in space, which is a wide spectrum uh, of many different things you could talk about. So I'm interested to know, uh, have you had any experiences with amateur radio in space, you know, are you inspired by it? Have you had a contact? Have you got a favourite mode of operation? Let us know if you've got anything uh, meaningful to add before we get our guest on. So we're going to go over to Australia. First check in. Good morning. I'm assuming it's very nice and early there. Probably about 6 a.m. Probably. Uh, let us know. Uh, VK3 HQ. K, sorry, HJK. It doesn't come up with your name on NetLogger, so uh, let us know who you are. From 2E1HWE. Yeah, Oscar, you got the call sign wrong. It's Hotel Juliet Quebec HJQ. I just uh, logged into uh, NetLogger as well. Um, anyway, good morning from down under. It's uh, John. Uh, maybe you did send me an email about this net. <laughs> and good to see Dave's doing it. Oh boy, God, he's a good fella, isn't he? He does everything. Anyway, um, what was the question? Something about space. The only contact I've had in space is uh, with Mia. Uh, when Mia was up there, I had a, um, a, a packet contact, um, or only did beacon, and that's about as much as I've got to do with um, space. <laughs> That's a bit, although we do the um, ARIS contacts for the schools here in Australia, so uh, we broad them cast, uh, broadcast them over the uh, uh, the network, All Star M17, IRLP, uh, Echo Link, um, you know, any any mode will uh, will transmit it there. So uh, we uh, we're involved in that as well. Anyway, thanks Oscar for the uh, net, and thanks to Dave for all he does as well, and uh, thanks to the Free Star Network. We go for HJQ back to net. Yeah, to Echo One Hotel Risk Echo on the Saturday night top tilt net. And apologies, John, I did think it was you with your voice, I recognised it. But when I had the call sign wrong and nothing was coming up on NetLogger, I didn't want to embarrass myself and, uh, you know, it would not be you. So uh, thanks for clarifying that. And uh, I've got you there. I don't know what it is with NetLogger, I've adjusted it, but it's still not coming up with. I'm not really used to NetLogger, I've probably done something wrong. Uh, Dave, if you're around and you can hear me, log in and adjust that if you know what to do. Uh, so John's details come up for some reason. It's, even though I've entered it again, it's not coming up. I'm not very good with this net logger, but there we go. We learn. And yeah, thanks for all what you do uh, with the contacts. It was really interesting. A few weeks ago, uh, just after Christmas, I know uh, you initiated an after uh, an after contact, didn't you? Like a live stream uh, with the Australian school. Uh, but yeah, you said something interesting. I just want to go back to you one more time, if I may. You said something about the mirror. Now, everyone doesn't really think about rough inside when it comes to contact, and that's an interesting angle, because we just think of the US and the European Space Agency, and possibly the Japanese. So, uh, with the Russian, I didn't realise they've got uh, equipment there. Uh, could you just briefly elaborate on that, if you could, John? Just let me know a bit more about what you said about Mir. Uh, that would be great. Uh, let us know a bit more. VK3HQJ from 2E1HWE. Okay, so it's, 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 well, you're getting me sucked in here, Oscar, aren't you? Uh, well, Mir Space Station bit the dust uh, years ago, fell into the ocean. Um, so it must have been, oh, I don't know, a good 20 years ago when they had uh, the, the Mir uh, Space Station floating around there. And uh, I used to run um, a um, packet station uh, here, well, a long time ago, also APRS. And I was just uh, cruising around, changing frequencies, and for some reason I must have got on the... Uh, on the downlink for the satellite, and I've um, got the beacon from the Mir space station. Um, but uh, it's it's a long time gone. And I think what was the one before that they had up there, um, Skylab or something? I think it but hit the dust too. Uh, I think a lot, lot of it fell uh, fell into pieces in parts of Australia. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a long time ago when the Earth was green, Oscar. Over. To the one HW returning. I'm just thinking space. How much is that worth? But I suppose it burns up, doesn't it? It's probably worth nothing. A bit of ash, 
that's left when it does uh, fall to the atmosphere, but uh, space junk. That would be a valuable commodity if you could sell that, but uh, as, as you said, it all burns up, doesn't it? Or maybe it doesn't all burn up, I'm not quite sure, I'm not an expert, but uh, yeah, I'm really into my uh, space, uh, you know, I, really, I don't know a lot about it, but it interests me, because it is infinite, isn't it, really? Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, it is an infinite kind of thing, space, so uh, it is a bit of a mind-blowing uh, exercise when you analyse it. Anyway, for time reasons, we move on. John, stick around if you can. It'd be great to get your input further on when we get our specialist and our panellist on at 10 o'clock UK time, 2200 UTC for anyone else in the world. Right, we move on down to Scott. Good evening, Scott. One of the stalwarts of the Freestar Network. He has got a new gateway in town. I will give you a bit of publicity there. His new two-metre gateway is on the air. So I uh, hope that's doing well, Scott. And let us know about your experiences of space in amateur radio. Have you got any? Or is there anything you'd like to try in the future? Uh, 2E0KBZ21HWE. Top talk next. Yeah, to his old KBZ, which I do like. Yeah, um, two things. One, MB7ABZ has actually gone off there. It packed up. It was causing too much interference, too much buzzing noise and everything like that, transmit and receive. It got really, really loud. I tried everything to fix it, and I thought, no, I've got to retire it. It is an old thing. It was an old, it was an old um, Bofang radio, what was in it. Um, I will get it repaired, but I've took it completely off air. I'm going to go down the Didical Road as well with a, with a gateway. Right. Yes, I've actually spoken to the space station when I was an M6 a long, long time ago. And the next one on, Richard, who's after me, he's a member of the same club I'm, I'm at, and I actually spoke through a satellite with, um, with somebody from the radio club. And that was um, pretty good as well. And well, I've never done the satellite from home, only from our radio club. Uh, back to net control, this is 2E0KVZ. Zero KBZ two one HWE. Do you know what? I've never done that. I've never worked a satellite before. Uh, but don't worry. If you are thinking of doing it, anybody, we do have the YouTuber, the digital analog ham, who knows how to uh, activate the ISS. He will be sharing some tips later on. That'll be one of the guests coming on to give some tips on uh, if you haven't done it. You've got basic equipment, how you can do it very, very simply and cheaply. Uh, so that'd be interesting to get uh, the views of Chris later on. So yeah, I'd love to work that, Scott. I really, really would love to work at the space station. Um, I think I'd rather work it on Simplex, though, and actually talk to an astronaut. That, for me, would be the absolute icing on the cake. You know, don't get me wrong. I'd be happy if I got a repeater. Uh, you know, contact, but to work it simplex, I think that's got to be really special. For, for me anyway, I think that would be the ultimate. I think that, I, I don't know if it gets any better than that really. Is it, is, you know, is there anything better you can do in amateur radio apart from work the International Space Station? That's a good question. If anyone wants to answer that at some point, please let me know, because uh, for me that's my pinnacle, so uh, it'd be interesting to hear what yours are. Uh, so I'll hand it back to you one more, Scott, uh, one more time, Scott. Uh, just clarify, was it the repeater, or did you actually work it simplex on the uh, on the 800 there? Uh, back to you. Yeah, two weeks ago, I Control. 
Yeah, to E1HWE. And it's surprising, you don't actually need specialist equipment to receive it. You know, you can do it on a normal collinear. You know, I've, I've listened in the first lockdown, absolutely fantastic, to a store in the US talking to Chris Cassidy. I think that was his name, a US astronaut. And I've got it for 10 minutes. And the craziest thing is I noticed, I don't know if you noticed this, Scott, or anyone else, it's stronger, not when it's above you, but when it's at the side of you. When it's actually the closest point to your antenna, because it's above the collinear, it's not at the size on the curvature of the Earth. You know, I'm probably not using the right technical terms here, so I apologise, I'm not that clever, but you don't get it as good when it's as close to you. You actually get it better when it's, you know, further down on the horizon uh, compared to your collinear. If that's the antenna you're using, uh, which is probably not the best antenna, but you can still do it, you can still listen, and I loved it, absolutely loved it, just listening, let, al let alone talking to it. So I'm incredibly envious, I really am, and uh, I'm sure Richard, who's next on the list, is going to top that and make me even more jealous. <laughs> hi, hi. It's good, jealous in a good way, as you can imagine. So I'll hand it over to you. Uh, I think you might be a first caller into the net, if you are. Great to have you on board the Good Ship Top Talk. And uh, let us know your experiences of amateur radio in space, if you've got any, which I'm sure you have. So 2 Echo Zero, Foxtrot Bravo, Foxtrot from 2E1HWE. This is Two Echo Zero, Foxtrot Bravo, Foxtrot. Not with any experience in space. Um, never been around when uh, when it's been there. I've either been at work, so not with an awful lot to report there. Something I would like to try at some point, but uh, obviously with work commitments when the ISS is over there, I've never been in a position to, however. Yeah, 2 e one hwe Well, the good news is there is an app. You know, there is an app on your phone that you can download. And someone told me about this. Let me get the name of it. And it actually sends you like a notification when it's over or about to go over your head uh, and it's in range. Um, so that would be a great thing because it just all really pings you. You haven't got to look anything up. You can just randomly, if you're around near your radio and you know it's going to be on a pass, uh, you get an app flash up. Uh, ISS Detector. There we go. It's a free of charge app. Uh, the Interna or ISS, International Space Station Detector, if you look at that, that will give you a notification uh, of the past, the angle, the time, uh, and lots of other statistics I'm not quite sure on. Uh, but yeah, that, that's uh, my, my guidance. Uh, try that, and you never know, you might actually hear someone uh, <laughs> come back to your call. Uh, I think the key from what someone said is you've got to You've got to get an astronaut on their break. So if you look up uh, their break times or when they rest in the evening, I think they work all on UTC, don't they, if I'm right in saying that. Anyway, it's interesting stuff. But thanks for coming on the net, uh, Richard. Nice to have you on. And stick around. If you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to answer or ask them. Excellent. Right, next we're going across the estuary here. The Thames Estuary to Chris. M1BIK to Chris. Any experiences with amateur radio in space? Let us know. M1BIK, please. W H W H W H W E. I'm Mike Bravo. You know. Well, I've had, I've had no personal experience uh, of it, um, but I, one of my uh, very early memories as a, as a kid of amateur radio. Was um was hit was um was when my dad had um had some equipment set up that he borrowed from uh, another another old friend of his uh who's sadly passed um and was uh, listening out for uh, the old Oscars and uh, the old Oscar birds which were coming when he was at the round at the time and um yeah um I heard the beacons from uh. Um, from a couple of modern, the, uh, modern satellites. Um, but as far as the uh, actually trying to contact somebody on ISS is concerned, uh, you do have to remember that um, it's only subject the uh, you only get a uh, voice contact back if there's somebody up there who's licensed. Um, the fact that state, the fact there is a licensed station up there. Nothing necessarily means everyone in the crew can actually be entitled to use it. 
another closing point as far as uh, when the signal is strongest, um, seems strongest. The signal is always strongest when the fresnel is at what is when your antenna's fresnel zone is pointing straight at the fresnel zone of the of the antenna you're trying to you're, you're trying to in, you're trying to communicate with at the station. So in the case of beams, when two beams over point to each other. When you're at I can bother in your kilo. Um but as soon as you move off the uh direct line of sight direct line of sight and the fresh and go off angle into the professional zone, you start getting rapid attenuation. So you really want to be pointing your beam, that's its beam, or your antenna, that's its antenna, as parallel as you can, which is why uh which is which is why it's important with satellite when you set up satellite receivers to get the alignment right. Uh, yeah. Two E two E one HWE from Mike One Bravo and Kilo. Yeah, two Echo One Hotel Whiskey Echo returning. And I do love some technical information, Chris. So thank you very much for uh, sharing that with us. And um I did a little bit of research. The first satellite, if I'm right in saying this, was Oscar One, and that was in 1961. That was the first one. But you mentioned some beacons, Chris. I don't, I, you know what? That must have escaped my research. Can you elaborate a little bit more on these beacons that you mentioned, uh, please? Can you let us know what they are, how you've worked them? Give us a bit more information, because I didn't think about that, Chris. I didn't think that there was really beacons up there, but now you've got me thinking there would be, wouldn't there? Um, you know, what frequencies? Are they geostationary? Or are they, you know, orbiting around? Uh, any more information you can share with anyone on the uh, beacons, please? Uh, M1BIK, over to you. WE, one brother and you here. Well, I've never actually worked here, I've only really heard them. But you keep in mind that for um that every 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 amateur station every 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 amateur station that runs off that has an unattended mode to it requires a CWID beacon to be sent every so often um uh, while well, well, it's active. So therefore those those are your beacons. You know, pure and simple. So if you listen to uh, if you listen on the uh if you listen on the uh like say the gateways occasionally, the uh, the sa the uh, satellite gateways uh, or the uh T G gateways, every so often you'll hear a C W I D come over. And those are your beacons. Oh and obviously and obviously there's some of the T G and the some of the T G ones uh the uh obviously they have their own in mode T G as well as a beacon as well as the C W I D beacon. But I've already heard them, I never actually managed to get back to them. And yes, you'd be right right you well, the first official amateur radio satellite uh was Oscar one. Um but technically um there is a uh, there's a there is a question mark over the original Sputnik. Um because apparently the, there is a on record somewhere, um, but no one's ever managed to find evidence of it, that it was actually the uh, the the, 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 the uh, radio amateur was actually a Russian radio amateur was in the Russian radio amateur was actually involved in the idea of it being put up as a uh, Like a like, like propaganda exercise, but um, just to prove it could be done. But um, so there is a technical question mark of whether was it was it truly a political measure, or was it a semi amateur radio project? Two one HWE, Michael Bravo, and your kilo. Yeah, two E one H. WE returning. Well, thank you very much for that, Chris. You just got me uh, thinking when you said that uh, <laughs> of the uh, famous Joe Meek uh, song, which has eluded me, and I know what it is. It's gone gone blank from the 1960s. So uh, 
Yeah, that piece of music just coming in my head. Maybe I'll have to find it out in a minute. Excellent stuff. Well, we're at the bottom of the list, so we'll see if there's anyone else who would like to join the Saturday Night Top Talk Net, where tonight's subject is amateur radio in space. So in about five minutes' time, we're going to start to bring on our three panellists. That's right, we have panellists here on the Free Star Network, some friends of ours who are I suppose, specialists in their areas that know great knowledge uh, on bits and bobs, and we'll be inviting them for a few questions and conversation in about five minutes. But before we do that, we'll see if there's anyone else who'd like to get on the list and join this net. So if there's anyone out there, please let us know. The call sign, slowly, phonetically, and also your name and location, please. This is 2E1HWE. See if there's anyone else to check in. Q of it. 2 Echo Zero Uniform Charlie Whiskey Chris Yankee Throat. Okay, thank you, Chris. I left an extra long pause just in case anyone else, but not to worry. So 2 E Zero UK or UCW in West London. Good evening. Welcome aboard the Good Ship Top Talk. And I think we need to make an announcement. And I'm not going to steal your thunder. Before we ask you the question of the evening, would you like to tell everyone what you've been up to in the last week? Over to you, Chris, from 2E1HW. Yeah, 2 e 0 UCW. Um, well, I wouldn't say a hell of a lot in the last week, but uh, uh, shack rearrangement today to make space for uh, MV7. RCW, which will be the, uh, the gateway on the Freestar Network via All-Star. So uh, I've got the, uh, the radio uh, all connected up, the power and antenna, the Raspberry Pi is ready, just needs to be set up. And uh, a few other little bits and pieces I'm waiting for, and uh, hopefully on air in uh, another week or so, um, get a bit of testing done, obviously. And... Uh, have my uh, co plug uh, checked out by uh, Dr. Node, who's already got a copy of that. And uh, yeah, um, but uh, I'm full of dust today. Uh, under the desk, uh, uh, all over the place, just uh, making space and uh, making sure everything is labelled and uh, ready for action. Back to you. Excellent stuff, 2E1HWE. Yes, the famous Dr. Node of the Free Star Network, a.k.a. Shane Daly M0VUB. Shane is available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, and anything gateway-related in terms of guidance and advice. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear he's helping you get Mike Bravo 7 India Charlie Whiskey up and running, which uh, was, was so great that we've now got uh, anyone in the West London area uh, the gateway will be in West Drayton, which is just north of the M4 at Heathrow Airport, uh, and also will cover the M25 as well in the West London area. Uh, switch on, as you, uh, Chris has said, to be confirmed, it's under testing. Uh, but that frequency, if you are in the West London area, will be 145.2125 MHz, with a CTCSS of 77 Hz. So we congratulate Chris. 2E0 UKW for that new gateway. Uh, and it is on QRZ, isn't it, Chris? So if anyone wants more connection details, uh, please check that out under MB7 ICW. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get on to the question of the evening, Chris. And what I want to know, or what we want to know uh, on the net this evening, as we're talking about amateur radio in space, is have you had any space-related amateur experiences or contacts you'd want to share uh, or in the future, is there any uh, desire uh, to obviously explore any kind of uh, technology that will get you uh, and get your signal out there? So let us know. 2E0UCW from 2E1HWE. Yeah, 2E0UCW. Um, well, I've not made contact. Um, I've heard a little bit of audio. Uh, on one occasion, um, yeah, uh, oh, that was some uh, some time back. Um, 
taken a, a bit more of an interest in uh, what, uh, watching uh, what kind of goes over the area. Um, I think there's a, a fair bit of uh, light pollution, but uh, uh, at times we've uh, managed to see stuff going over and uh, potentially uh, uh, spotted the space station uh, using the apps. And uh, like I say, um, I've had the radio out and uh, had it scanning through uh, um, the frequencies and um, yeah, uh, I did hear a little something. Uh, it wasn't too clear, but um, yeah, um, I think uh, you know the hobby has all sorts of aspects to it, and um, yeah, there's obviously a lot of people that enjoy that. Um, not a major thing for me, but uh, it would be nice uh, to make contact to at least say I have done it. Um, maybe not now, but uh, even some sometime in the uh, the future. Over. Excellent stuff to Echo One Hotel Whiskey. Echo, okay, it's definitely one of them things you want to tick off, isn't it, on the list? It definitely is. And uh, I'm actually sure, is it on the RSGB Beyond Exams? It might possibly be. We will see. So, yeah, thanks very much, Chris, for joining us. And congratulations again on that new gateway, uh, MB7ICW. Watch this space, everybody. That will be coming very, very soon to the network. Right, the time is now 10.03 p.m., 22.03 in the Greenwich Mean Time in the UTC. Uh, just being informed, all the connections are now connected. Good evening to our friends on the Isle of Man at the Manx Repeater. Just heard the repeater calling through there with its, uh, with its morse. So hello to everyone there on GB3IN-S in Snaefell with a connection to the island. Also, big up to the Canada Hub, Adrian, Scott, we see you're connected as well. Nice to have you here on the network this evening. So without further ado, let's get our first of a trio of guests. That's right, we have three special guests, our panellists, regular panellists here on the Talk Talk Net, our contributors who we're going to ask a few questions to who know a little bit about this stuff, or a little bit more about me. I think that's probably about than me, not me. A little bit more than I know. Let me rephrase that about amateur radio in space. But uh, before I bring them on, uh, just as a refresh, uh, the first amateur radio transmission in space, in space, that is, was in 1983, so 38 years ago, when the astronaut Owen, uh, I think it's Gareth, I can't pronounce that, took to the airways from the Space Shuttle Columbia. So there we go, there's one fact for you. And then the second fact is the first uh, satellite in space that was amateur radio based was in 1961. So that was quite early really, wasn't it? Uh, Oscar one. there we go. Right, our first guest everybody is the YouTuber, the renowned YouTuber and friend of the Freestyle Network, Mr. Chris Andrews, 2Echo0UKH. If you haven't heard of this man, I don't know where you've been, you want to get onto the YouTube channel, great channel, the Digital Analog Hand. And if uh, anyone follows Chris, you'll see he's done a few videos before uh, on contacts uh, with the Amateur Radio International Space Station. And uh, he's a good guy as well. He, know, he, knows, he knows a bit about how to, uh, how to make a contact. So Chris, let's see if you're out there. 2E0UKH, are you with us? QRZ, please. Okay, let's see uh, if he's there. Chris, 2E0UKH, are you receiving from 2E1HWE? Okay, just looking on the dashboard to see if Chris is out there. I think he's connected, so he's probably just having, <laughs> he's probably just having a little break. So uh, we'll give one more call. If not, we will get our other guest on and uh, we'll revert back. So Chris... Are you awake? Have you fallen asleep? Or are you actually trying to work a satellite as we speak? That would be that would be good, wouldn't it? If you were live streaming now with a satellite, then it would all be good, wouldn't it? And uh, that would be an absolutely fantastic contact. So let's just see if he's out there one final time. 2E0UKH. 2Echo0UKH. Are you receiving? Over. Okay, nothing heard. Nothing heard. So... <laughs> 
There we go. I'm sure he's around somewhere, and we'll get back to him in a minute. A big build-up, Chris, and where were you? Never mind. Right, let's see if our next guest's on. If not, I'll give up and I'll turn off. So uh, hopefully he'll be around, because I'm about six minutes earlier than I said. I know he's working tonight, so I'm hoping, and I'm also praying, he is available now. So before I do the big intro, let me just see if he's out there. If not, I'll have to come up with something, will I? I'll answer my own question. So Paul, MM7WAB, Mike Mike 7, Whiskey Alpha Bravo, are you with us please? Q R Z. Okay, nothing heard. So before I proceed, let me just check with the tech guys that we haven't got any connection issues because I know with all the storms up there in the northeast, uh, we had a problem with one of the servers. The power got lost and we've had to move a few things around. So maybe there could be a possible uh, connection issue. Uh, so let me just check if there's any other admins out there. Uh, just let me know that we're all okay to proceed. Uh, I don't want to keep calling if uh, we've got a problem. Uh, so let me know anyone. Just uh, leave a pause and uh, just get someone to check the connection for a second. Zero VUV. Everything's looking all good here, Oscar. Everything's connected. Back to you. I'm zero VUV. Okay, thanks very much for clarification. So, let's see if the third guest is there. <laughs> I've, never had, I've never had this happen before. Two guests blow out. So, uh, hopefully it won't be free. I'm sure it won't be. Let's see. Dave, are you going to save the day? Or am I going to be talking to myself for half an hour? Uh, G-W-A-S-Z-L. Are you there? QRZ if you are, please. Yeah, this is Golf Whiskey, H.C. Hour, Zulu, Lehman. I'm here, but um, I was downstairs uh, drinking a cup of coffee, so I ran up the stairs without spilling my coffee, just in case. Hope the signal's okay. Who Whiskey One, Hotel Whiskey Echo, CW at SLL. Hey, <laughs> Well, I'm glad you turned up. It's all good, isn't it? No, I'm sure the other two will be around. Uh, I know... Uh, there were some other things going on where they were busy, so uh, there we go. It's great when it's live, isn't it? Keeps you on your toes, keeps you on the toes. So thank you very much. If anyone doesn't uh, recognise Dave, he has been a panellist on the Top Talk Net previously. You may have heard him on the Raspberry Pi Net. That's right, the Raspberry Pi Net, which is every Sunday at 2200 UTC here on the network. He is a dual net control with John on that net. So uh, he is a specialist in Raspberry Pi. But tonight we're not talking about that. We're not talking about the Raspberry. We're not talking about the Pies. We are talking about amateur radio in space, which I know, Dave, you share a passion. You are uh, an amateur radio in space enthusiast, I think, or radio in space enthusiast. So uh, I know uh, you love to talk about this kind of stuff. So I'm going to go straight into my first question, Dave, and I hope you don't mind. Sorry you didn't get a chance to get a coffee and warm yourself up. <laughs> But there we go, hopefully you're ready for me. So my first question to you is, what is ARIS? A-R-I-S-S. Now I know what it is, but obviously there's a lot of people who aren't aware of it. Uh, we've got a lot of people on the net who may have not heard it before. So what is ARIS? And uh, am I saying that right? Probably my Essex accent coming out there. What does it stand for? Well, you know, what does, it, what does that word mean? Or the abbreviation of it mean? And what do they do in the amateur radio space community. Uh, so over to you, what is ARIS, what do they stand for, and what do they do? That's your first question, please. GW8SL, oh, I said L, from 2E1HWE on the Saturday night, Top Talk Net. Yeah, two Whiskey One, Hotel Whiskey Echo. This is Golf Whiskey 8, Sierra Zulu Lima. Yep, okay there, Oscar. Well, ARIS, it actually stands for I'm at the radio on board the International Space Station. So it covers a whole uh, broad spectrum. But most people have actually uh, heard it in reference to uh, the ARIS uh, contacts with educational establishments. But ARIS actually lets uh, students experience the actual excitement of talking with an astronaut on the International Space Station. And the whole point of it is to uh, inspire them to pursue interests 
in careers in science, technology, engineering, and maths, also known as STEM. And it also introduces them to radio science and technology through the use of amateur radio. And the Aris program was actually created, and it is managed by an absolute uh, an international uh, consortium of amateur radio organizations, such as AMSAT. You've got AMSAT US, AMSAT GB, AMSAT DE, and a whole, a whole load of others. And of course, could, nothing could be done without the, uh, the support of uh, space agencies, such as uh, NASA from the US, uh, Russia, Canada, Japan, and Europe. So uh, that's uh, all about Aris there, uh, Oscar. Go ahead. Excellent stuff to E1HWE returning. Thanks for answering that. And there is a website, isn't there, where you can find out more. Uh, the uh, website there, uh, we'll have to look it up in a minute and give you the details. But uh, it's a good website, actually. There's a lot of information on it. I haven't looked on there for quite some time, but uh, it does list all the contacts on there uh, that they make. And uh, a question that I think a lot of people ask is telebridge. What is a telebridge? Because I've heard this phrase before, and I, I get it's a connection, but is it a technical name for something special? I don't know. So what is a telebridge, and how does it work uh, with the contacts there, uh, Dave, if you could let us know? Uh, back to you from 2E1HWE on the Amateur Radio in Space Top Talk Net. 2E0UKH, call in Okay, this is GWNS, and I'll pass it back to uh, you, Oscar, so UKH is now calling in. Go ahead. Yes, 2-0 UKH, we thought you'd gone to the moon. <laughs> you're receiving us loud and clear now, which is great. Uh, thanks for calling in, and uh, hope you're okay there, Chris. Over to you. Yes, doing okay, and um, yes, I'm doing okay. Uh, I just had a little nap. I nodded off, <laughs> and um, I did set some alarms, but they didn't let me. Uh, they didn't wake me up. So uh, anyway, I'm here, and I've. Uh, I'm, I apologise. Back to you. Oh, don't be silly. Don't worry about it. These things happen. It's not life or death. So luckily, uh, it was okay. I've got three guests tonight. So <laughs> if you was the only guest, I might have been a bit. Uh, you know, in a sticky situation, but it's fine. So, uh, if it's okay, Chris, I'll finish off with Dave. And I think Harry Paul's got a, a tight schedule. Uh, he's got to come on in a minute. So, uh, I'll, I'll see if he's out there first, if you're okay to wait there. So, uh, I'll carry on with Dave, if that's okay. Just have a bit of a rejig around, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so, Dave, yes, Telebridge. Just tell us a bit more about the Telebridge, uh, if you could, there, uh, with the contacts with Aris. Uh, G W A S L. Or S, I can't get this right. S Z L from two E one H W E. Yeah, from Golf Whiskey H C L Zulu Lever. Well, um, as some of you might know, might not know, uh, we are in the process of setting up an Irish contact with uh, Declan School, and uh, uh, his head teacher is a friend of mine, and uh, we're going through all this process. <laughs> so it's very, very fresh in my mind. Okay, now there's two ways to set up an Irish contact with the International Space Station. Uh, these are called direct and telebridge. Now, a direct Irish school contact involves setting up in the school a satellite type amateur radio ground station. And this is usually done by uh, local amateurs. Now, there's many reasons why this kind of setup is not always possible. The school building or the location may be totally inappropriate for setting up a rival amateur station ground, uh, amateur satellite station ground station. Now, uh, this could be due to anything from uh, antenna space limitations, uh, limited view of the horizons, if there's a big mountain next to the school, and uh, the satellite pass, uh, the International Space Station pass is going to be uh, going behind it. Obviously, you're going to have to have a line of sight. To, the, uh, to hear the actual International Space Station and the astronaut, and if it goes around the big hill, you're going to lose it. And uh, there could also be no passes of the International Space Station over the location at the time his school is open. For example, if all the passes at that time, you know, are going to be in the middle, middle of the night, the school's going to be closed. Let me reset. 
And now we come on to the Telly Ridge. Now, Aris has several dedicated amateur radio satellite ground stations uh, all over the world. Now, these ground stations can link the astronauts to virtually any school in the world as long as they have a working telephone line. Now, Aris, when you request a contact, they will select the most appropriate ground station to handle the contact with the ISS. And uh, the uplink and downlink signals will be relayed to the school by a teleconference uh, via the phone line. And this is at no cost to the school whatsoever, so it's totally free. There is um, also a multi-point telebridge. And uh, that is basically where uh, students can be at home. It's a bit like remote learning in schools. Uh, could be at, ho at home, and they're linked into the school, and uh, the school then links over to uh, the uh, uh, telebridge station. And they do it that way. But that's a multi-point telebridge. But most you'll hear is telebridge and direct. With that, I will pass it back to you, Oscar, from GW at Asterham. VK3FTRM. Yeah, excellent stuff. Thanks for that. It's very interesting. You don't realise, well, I think people don't always take it for granted, or take it for granted, but there's a lot that goes up. It's not similar to someone's just got a radio. They set the frequency and then they key up when it's overhead. It, it's probably months, definitely weeks, maybe months of preparation, isn't it? Uh, and then there's a lot of other stuff, as you said, telelinks and microphone audios, and you've got to brief the students how to do the contact properly. There's a lot that goes into it. You don't, I'm sure people just don't turn up and turn it on. It wouldn't just work, would it? But uh, I think we've got John who wants to make a comment. Uh, I know John's been involved with the Australian one, potentially, haven't you, which was a few weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, John, if you want to come in and add anything uh, to that, you're more than welcome. bk 3 hjq 31 hwe No, that wasn't Correct. me there, Oscar. Somebody else was trying to get in. Uh, Tango, Oscar, Mike. bk 3 ftom Tom. Yeah, apologies, I didn't grab the call sign. I thought it was you, John. There's another VK free station. Uh, please give us your call sign. Again, sorry you did double. And pass your message, please. 31HWE, this is the Top Talk Net. Yeah, the call sign is Victor Kilo 3, Foxtrot, Tango, Oscar Mike, VK3 FTOM, VK3 F Tom. Name is Tom uh, in Melbourne. Uh, I just uh, was talking about uh, the ARIS program here. Uh, we have uh, uh, done it several times here in Melbourne. Uh, Ralph, VK3 Double L, and, and a couple of others, uh, Damien, VK3, I think he's called Science KQ, have done several uh, link ups for uh, some of the big uh, groups here in Melbourne and some of the schools. There's, uh, I think there was one done six months ago in between the COVID lockdowns for, uh, I think it was uh, for some school in uh, in uh, Richmond here in Melbourne. Uh, 2E1HQ something, I think it was, from VK3. Yeah, okay, thanks very much, uh, Tom. And uh, yeah, there was a contact early January. Uh, I listened to that uh, when I was off work a few weeks ago. So uh, what we'll do, we'll put you on the list, Tom. This is a directed net, so we just have an hour uh, guest on, and we will uh, come back for any questions or comments at the end. Uh, right, so Dave, we're in for a treat, aren't we? Because you couldn't make this up. There is a ne The next contact is only less than a week away. On Friday the 4th of February, there is another school contact. Could, could you tell us a little bit more about what this contact's going to be? Uh, the school, the time it's going to be, and apparently it will be audible over parts of Europe. So, uh, yeah, let us know about the next contact. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people listening out there tonight that want to put that in the diary and maybe see if they can uh, hear the station uh, come through. So, QWASZL 2E1HWE. Yeah, from uh, QW8SZL. Well, this particular contact is a direct contact. Now, uh, some uh, educational establishments have got their own radio club, and uh, they might have equipment actually there at the location already to use as uh, a ground station. 
But uh, this one is the Johannes Kepler Gymnasium, and it's in Lebach, Germany. And it's direct via Delta Lima Zero, Juliet Kilo Golf. I did have a look, I uh, did look up that call sign. I couldn't find uh, anything uh, uh, about uh, DL Zero JKG. So I don't know if it's a club station or uh, is he just going to go and, uh, you know, take a trailer to Mast or Tower or whatever and do it that way. But it is direct. Um, now, when, uh, due to the melt, the. Uh, Nas multiple nationalities on board the actual International Space Station. If they do, they always try and use the language of the country that they are actually having the contact with. So a German school will be uh, somebody who could speak German on board the ISS. Uh, China, Chinese, and uh, Japan, Japanese, etc. And the only the only information I could find on this particular contact was that uh, it was actually written in German. And my uh, knowledge of German is really like zero. But uh, I did find where uh, Lee Back was, and uh, it should, you know, if you listen, uh, you should actually be southeast of the uh, UK, and maybe a little bit further. I have to run uh, the uh, pro uh, pro uh, prediction uh, software back all the way to the 4th of February to find out exactly. Let me reset. Yep, from uh, GWNS now. So this is a direct contact, and most of those direct contacts are pretty rare these days as I said, unless they got already the equipment there, because schools and educational establishments, if you go and, uh, as I found out, uh, with uh, tax uh, school, or oh, they've got to change you know, public liability insurance, all the health and safety inspections, you know, you put up for the uh, antenna and all the rest of it, and uh, it's a nightmare. So the easiest option is always a, a tally bridge <laughs> at the moment, due to all the red tape that uh, educational establishments in the UK have got to go through. But yes, I think it should be, uh, it should be actually uh, hearable. Only the actual International Space Station, of course, you will hear. Uh, you won't be able to uh, hear uh, uh, the German station uh, direct on two meters from the UK, obviously. Back to you there, uh, Oscar. From Golf Whiskey 8, Sierra, Zulu, Lima. Yeah, 2E1HW returning. If anyone just switched on the radio, this is the Saturday Night Top Talk Net on the Free Star Network, and tonight's topic is amateur radio in space. And we've got a few specialists out there, a few uh, people that know a few things about this kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll bring the other ones on in a second. But that website, I've just been looking. I found the website. It's aris.org. That's Alpha Romeo India Sierra Sierra dot org. So if anyone wants to find out more about the contacts, when they can listen out, when they're going to be, a little bit more about how they operate and work. That is the URL to get yourself onto uh, aris.org, A-R-I-S-S dot org. There we go. So I think what I'll do, if it's okay, Dave, I might bring you back on in a minute. I just want to see if Paul is out there. I know he's working and he was going to try and pop in because he's the man in the know about our next... Uh, our next question about uh, cube satellites. So let me just see if he's there. If not, we'll move on to Chris. Uh, but Mike, Mike, Seven, Whiskey, Alva, Bravo, which I think could be portable. Are you with us, Paul? Let us know if you're there. Thank you, sir. Well, that very good evening to you, there, Oscar. Mike, Mike, Seven, Whiskey, Alva, Bravo, portable. Stood in the field in the Ayrshire, but uh, yeah, I'm here. I've probably got about another five or ten minutes when I've got to go back. Yeah, well, thanks very much. I'll go straight in with the question. And the first question, Paul, is you're in a field in the middle of the dark. Girl, you couldn't make this up, could you, on a Saturday night? <laughs> so this month, everybody, uh, is the eighth birthday of FunCube. FunCube is, a, I think, uh, was one of the first uh, cube satellites that amateurs put into space eight years ago, and it is still going strong. But in essence, Paul, for anyone like me who hasn't got a clue, what is a cube satellite? The real basic, thumb down, let's not get too technical on a Saturday night at half past ten in the evening, but um, what in essence is a cube satellite if anyone hasn't heard of one there, Paul? So uh, MM7WAB portable from 2 Echo 1 Hotel Whiskey Echo. Yeah, NM7WAB portable returning. Uh, well, the CubeSat, um, 
Well, it's a kind of an advancement in the way that satellites are built. Uh, makes it a lot quicker and easier and cheaper to develop and uh, you know get, get a, a satellite unit actually produced um, because it's a standardised shape, size, standardised uh, interface specifications. Uh, so the parts can be mass manufactured or lots of the components and sub-assembly boards and things like that uh, are off the shelf mass produced components uh, and they're all made with components up to the correct standards and all the rest of it uh, it's not cheap, I will say that but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than it used to be uh, you know, you used to be looking at uh, around sort of 50 to 60 grand to put a satellite up in space but uh, these days it's a lot less uh, but CubeSats, um, they are basically a miniaturised satellite which measures 10 centimetres cube so 10 centimetres each side is a little cube and that is a one U, one unit uh, satellite and that's what you generally refer to as a CubeSat uh, there are smaller ones and there are bigger ones but uh, the 10 by 10 by 10 centimetre CubeSat uh, it can weigh well, between 1 to 1.3 kilograms and that is a, effectively it's called a PicoSat really but they call them CubeSats cube Hang on, I'll just take a bit oh, uh, I'll carry on uh, Yes, they call them CubeSats, that's, the, that's what they're known as but the standard 1U, one 1-unit one CubeSat is a 10 centimetre cube and you've got to fit everything in the, into that space so um, it's quite a it's quite a thing managing to manage, miniaturize it all that much um, but uh, yeah it means that uh, satellites can be developed much quicker well, certainly small satellites can be developed much quicker and much cheaper than they used to be um, there's still a lot of paperwork licensing uh, rules and regulations and flight planning and all the rest of it that has to go into it and that's the bit that takes the time um, I believe uh, that the, the quickest um, satellite project that I've, I've actually heard about so far was nine months um, from concept to actual delivery into orbit and uh, putting it into use it was nine months but that was a company that's been doing it for quite a few years so they know what they're doing um, in general you're looking at 18 months to 3 years normally uh, for that sort of a project so it's uh, not a quick thing but it's getting a lot cheaper um, it used to cost a fortune now there is actually a company up here in Scotland that will take a 10 by 10 by 10 cube sat up to 1.2 kilos and they will put that into orbit for just uh, uh, slightly on the fat end of £20,000 which is not a lot when you think about it you know, costs less than a car these days and you can have your own satellite, what's not to like? back to you there sir, from Mike Mike 7 with the Alpha Bravo Portable yeah, 2E18W, yeah, who needs a car? Uh, yeah, when you've got your own cube satellite, you're right and do you know what, if you haven't already anybody just type into your web browser CubeSats uh, and go to images and do you know what, you can make this up these, you know, highly advanced, you know all in a, a dust free environment they've built or whatever and the antenna literally is like a five pound tape measure as an antenna from Screwfix or any other uh, reputable uh, DIY Emporium honestly you couldn't make this up, just have a little look a lot of these antennas are actually tape measures it's crazy isn't it, I, I think that's great, it just makes me laugh at it you know you've got something so sophisticated and you've got an antenna that looks like a bloody tape measure uh, but yeah there we go, it's uh, great to see them and uh, you know they're a little unknown entity uh, obviously you know do your research and you can, you can actually work some of these I believe uh, but we're going to move on to the next question like, you know why would you why would someone want to build one of these uh, Paul in your opinion why would someone would build one and who's funding it you know who would you know a lot of money who would fund it as well so MM7WAB portable from 2E1HWE on the top talk net 
and then so the WAB portable returning? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, but there are an awful lot of different uses for CubeSats, uh, PicoSats, PocketSats, um, you know, all these uh, little miniaturized satellites out there. Um, there's actually an awful lot of them up there already. There are a few for amateur use. Uh, there are a few that are put up there for education and development and experimentation by universities and schools uh, and other educational establishments. Uh, and of course there's commercial ones as well. Um, there are clusters of commercial satellites uh, creating networks and uh, getting larger coverage and yeah, there's all sorts that goes into it. But uh, yeah, uh, when you do look online at some of the pictures and uh, some of the stuff you see on YouTube, they built a CubeSat for a thousand pounds. Yeah, they might have done, but there's no way that would get past any of the regulations to be used in space, and it certainly wouldn't have a tape measure on it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, there are very tight regulations on the design and specifications, because it's not just your CubeSat that's at risk if something goes wrong. The entire launch vehicle and all the other payload satellites on board are all at risk if, uh, if, if something goes wrong. So they're very, very tightly controlled. Um, they're, they're very tight specifications. You know, um, all the materials and everything. It's, it's extensive testing and there's a lot of work that goes into it. So when you see some of these things on web pages and, uh, you know, uh, various people have got them on YouTube, all oh, built a CubeSat for under a thousand pounds, yeah, but it would never make it off the surface of the earth because it would not get certified for flight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. Best thing to do um, is to go and look at CubeSat.org and get proper information. Um, or, for someone that's uh, getting a wee bit more serious about it, you could have a look at a companies like AAC Clyde Space. Alpha Alpha Charlie Dash Charlie Lima Yankee Delta Echo Space AAC Clyde Space. They're based up here in Glasgow, um, and yeah, they do a full end-to-end -end mission manufacturing, customer payload integration, testing, certification, launching, commissioning, and operating the satellite and the ground station. Um, people forget it's not just a little box that you stick in space. You've got to control it as well. So there's the ground station and all the control solutions and all the telemetry. There's a lot more goes into it than people realise. Um, so yeah, it's uh, not a cheap toy, but it's becoming cheaper. And yeah, about the price of your average car, you can have your own satellite up there. As for the funding, well, there are rules and regulations for that as well. Let me just take a wee pip. Uh, now 7 WAD portable, carry on. Um, there are rules and regulations for that as well. So, for instance, an amateur radio satellite uh, comes under a specific set of regulations, which means that it cannot be funded by a commercial organisation or government funded. So, you have to get funding elsewhere. Uh, obviously, if it's a commercial satellite, then that's up to the company to uh, secure their own funding from investors or whatever, you know, uh, and for experimental use for universities and colleges and things, there's a different set of rules for them as well. Um, if you have a look at uh, NASA, just, just type in NASA CubeSat specification um, and you'll find the NASA page about deploying CubeSats and all the rules and regulations and paperwork that goes along with it. It's a very, very specific thing. If you think about it, it's not like you can just, uh, you know, grab a hold of it and change a component. <laughs> if it's uh, up there in orbit, yeah, it's, you can't fix it. <laughs> so it's got to be spot on. Uh, back to you there, sir. From the name Southern WAB. Cat 2E1 HD. W returning. If anyone's just tuned in, this is the Top Talk Net on the Freestyle Network. And uh, yes, we've got a few special guests. We've got Paul at the moment talking about cube satellites. And uh, I've got one more question, Paul. But yeah, I've just had a little look on there. And uh, there's lots of information. I don't even know where to start. RSGB looks quite good as well. If you go on their website, type in CubeSat or PhoneCube, 
Uh, that explains everything what we're talking about, what a CubeSat is, why CubeSat, phone cube, um, how to receive it, what frequencies, etc, etc. So again, really good information, I think, on the RSGB website as well, looking at that. And this is the thing I can't understand, is if you think there's a lot of red tape or a lot of rules and regulations for a small 10 by 10 centimetre CubeSat, I think that's what you said the dimensions were, God knows what Elon Musk had to do when he put that car in space. That must have been an absolute nightmare. Think of the paperwork. But anyway, my last question, Paul, because I know we're tight for time and obviously you know, you're at work tonight, so I appreciate you coming on, especially possible out there in the storm. I don't know if it's quite windy where you are. I can't hear the wind, so hopefully you're okay. But what is the future, Paul? What do you think in terms of tech? In amateur radio in space, is there anything on the horizon that looks interesting, Paul? Uh, you've got any gossip? <laughs> You got, got anything we should be looking out for there? MM7 WAB portable 2E1HWE. MM7 WAB portable, the, the tunnel. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, um, the way things are going at the moment, uh, we have CubeSats available. Um, there's a, a, a growing industry in producing and building and launching CubeSats. And I'm sure you'll have seen on news and things, um, was it uh, uh, Virgin who managed to do their second successful launch from uh, under the wing of a 747, launched the rocket and uh, off it went and deployed satellites into space. So there's more than one way of getting them up there now. Um, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big rocket, uh, you know, like one of Elon's uh, monster rockets. Um, it can actually be done from an aircraft in flight, and that that vastly reduces the cost and the amount of fuel and the environmental impact and all sorts. It's got a lot of good things going for it. So I can see that technology uh, being very important. And the other thing is, when electronics are getting smaller and cheaper and faster and more powerful, um, yeah, we can see these CubeSats shrinking. Or the pocket sats that are half the size, five centimeter cube pocket sat, um, you know, and uh, femto sats, you know, little tiny boxes. Um, <laughs> it's incredible what you can squeeze into a small space. Just think of your handheld radio or your smartphone, and you think of the power and the technology that's in that now. Um, you can squeeze things down into very small packages. So uh, yeah. Miniaturization, integration, uh, makes it lighter, cheaper, smaller, and you can deploy more of them at a time. So that will bring the, uh, the, the, like the bar for entry to space for our satellite operators and things. That will bring that down quite a long way. Uh, we're, we're, this is just the start of it. Um, I can see that, uh, uh, that the future is going to end up with an awful lot of uh, CubeSats spinning around up there. And the only people I feel sorry for are the astronomers. It must drive them nuts. Um, thousands of satellites up there, and there'll be several hundred more by this time next year. So, um, yeah, I feel sorry for the astronomers. But uh, for uh, everything else, it looks like a good thing. Anyway, I'm going to have to scoot. Uh, I know, I might get away with it. <laughs> They're not shouting at me yet. <laughs> From Mike Mike 7, Whiskey Alpha Bravo Portable. MM7WAB, portable 2E1HW. Well, thanks very much, Paul. We will let you get on. I'm just conscious of time as well, uh, because uh, we've probably got about another 20 minutes, everybody, until uh, we open it up again. So thanks for bearing with us. We will ba open it back up for any questions or comments like we usually do at the end. Uh, but obviously, we've still got uh, our next guest. So thank you very much, Paul. That was Paul. Uh, hairy Paul, to be precise. Mike Mike 7 Whiskey Alpha Bravo. Paul. If you haven't heard Paul before, he is our technical specialist here on the Freestar Network. He is also one of our regular panellists on the Top Talk Net. So thank you very much, Paul. And uh, don't get blown away in that storm out there. Right, let's see if he is wide awake. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's had a drink now and he's uh, all ready to go. So, Chris, just let me know you're there. Uh, 20 UKH, QRZ from 21HWE. Yes, 2E1HWE, uh, 
Y2E0UKH. Wide, <laughs> wide and awake, back to you. Yeah, <laughs> 2E1HWE. Do you know what, Chris? I wouldn't dream of giving you a hard time because I've done it as well. I, I fell asleep, didn't I? Uh, but my excuse was a bit better. Mine was at 3 o'clock in the morning waiting to go on Mixnet, uh, the uh, hand shack. Uh, hand shack, what am I talking about? Northwest hand shack, the two metre crew. But uh, no, I've done it as well, mate. So uh, don't worry about it. It's all good and uh, it's made us giggle tonight, which is great. So uh, if anyone doesn't know Chris, he is a YouTuber. He has the uh, YouTube channel, The Digital Analog Hand. So if you haven't already checked that one out on the YouTube, have a little look at it. Digital Analog Hand. There's lots of absolute fabulous content out there, and his enthusiasm is fantastic. And uh, I know uh, you always got something interesting to say, Chris. So the first one, now I never knew this. This is a new one on me, and I don't know if anyone else has heard this before. APRS in space. I didn't even know it existed until you, you, you mentioned it. So could you tell us a little bit about your experience with it? Apparently, you, you've managed to w work some APRS, so we all want to know how you did it and what, what was it all about, Chris? Over to you, 2E0UKH. This is 2 Echo 1 Hotel Whiskey Echo on the Saturday night Top Talk Net. Yes, OK, Oscar. APRS, yes, you can get an APRS contact. Very, It's just as easy as amateur radio APRS. There's just two differences. It's on a different frequency. It's on 145825. That is the frequency for space station APRS on FM. And it's got a different... SSID, it's got a different, it's a bit like an email address, you know, it's, it, it's a different address, there's just two, when, I got, when I've got on my FT5D, on the ASU FT5D or 3D, there's two things I change, I change the channel to the frequency mentioned, and I just go in, in and change the address, the SSID, to the relevant one. So, anyway, back to you, Oscar. Yeah, 2E1HW returning. I had no idea that there was a... I've heard of slow scan TV, you know, on the International Space Station, but, I, you know, is, that, is it the International Space Station, Chris? Am I getting this right, or is it... Just using APRS in space and bouncing it off something. Uh, can you just clarify that for me? Over. Yes, it is APRS. It's on the space station, and you bounce. Basically, I could, if I was to do APRS from my house or from a handheld, let's say, you know, I might get on a good day, I might get 100 miles, 150 miles, you know. In, in practice, through the space station, I have success. I think my best contact was Sweden. You know, on an F, on an FM handheld on four watts, from bouncing it off the space station to another station listening for APRS, uh, Sweden. So I think it was about eight or nine hundred miles. It was it was pretty decent, and. Uh, I bounced it off the space station. Back to you. Yeah, 2 one I had no idea you could do it, Chris. Absolutely no. I didn't even know that you, you could do APRS on uh, 145.825. So that is something I'm definitely interested in trying. And as you said, you don't need any specialist equipment. You, you've done it on a handheld on 4 watts. So... You know, I suppose it's the right place at the right time, isn't it? I think you need to know a little bit about that. But that leads me on to the next question, Chris, because I know you've also worked via voice the uh, International Space Station repeaters, uh, possibly on one or two occasions. And that can't be easy. You know, I, I've, heard, I've seen videos on YouTube, and it is a pile-up. It is literally like, oh, it, it just looks daunting, um, and difficult because everyone is just shouting over each other one. It's a bit of a car crash. 
but you've been successful. So can you share, Chris, if someone wants to do this, you know, they want to get a contact with the ISS, with the repeater, so we're not talking about the, the usual simplex 145.800. We're talking about now, you know, on the repeater frequencies, you know, which I think is it uplink on 2 metres and downlink on 70. I think I'm right in saying that. You know, what's your tip? If anyone wants to try and do this, you know, you've done it, you've been successful, can you share any useful tips on how to achieve this activation, Chris? Uh, 20UKH21HWE, over. Yeah, okay, Oscar. Yes, I've I've done it many, many times, probably ten or twenty times at different contacts. So uh, and this will require several overs on my my side. So uh, you know, people just want to listen, just to get started, just to learn. You know, just to know. If, you know, it is possible, but just to learn. There's there's just two things you need to do if you just want to learn and have a listen. You need to listen on a radio, on a handheld, you know, on 437.800. Yeah, okay, Oscar, yes, I've done it many, many times, probably 10 or 20 times at different contacts. So, uh, you know, it is possible, but just to get you just listen when it's going overhead. When the radio on board the space station is set up for the repeater, so you would get something like ISS detector, it's an app on your phone or heavens above, find out when it's going over, and you can do a search. If you did a search on a Google in a browser, a Google browser, you did a search for ISS radio status. <coughs> Excuse me. ISS ISS radio status. If you did that, it tells you it comes up it comes to the website they were talking about earlier. It comes back to the aris.org website and it shows you what the radio on board is currently assigned to. It's going to be assigned to either APRS or it might be the ISS repeater. Um, so anyone listening tonight, the ISS is currently set to APRS and it, on the 31st it changes to the, you know, in a few days time, I think it's Monday, it changes to the um, you know, to the ISS amateur radio repeater. That's you, Oscar. Yeah, two one eight. That's good advice. Do you know what? Just have a few. Listen, listen first before you start. Cause, you know, it can get confusing. Uplink on one frequency, downlink on another. You know, that's good advice. Just you know, it passes every day, doesn't it? Normally, I know I've got the app and it keeps flashing up every day in the afternoon probably about five, six o'clock at night. It's passing twice at the moment within about an hour. I don't know if it's a clear pass, I've not really looked into it, but the, my, my detector's going off about that time every evening for the last week. So that's a good time to maybe just listen for a few days and get, get, get to grips with it all. Uh, so yeah, good, 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 good thoughts there. But I think a lot of people, you know, when you watch these videos, it all gets a little bit daunting because there's all this Doppler shift business, isn't there, that you've got to, if you're listening, you've got to kind of twist, twist the VSO and like just mess around with it. So, you know, that, that can be a bit like, if you're on a handheld, that's not easy, is it? You haven't got a VSO, you're going to have to keep pressing buttons. Uh, on a bow fan, it's a blooming nightmare. But, uh, yeah, I suppose it's something you just need to, you know, play around with. So that's a good, good thing, you know, because if you're listening, you're going to have to keep changing the uh, receive frequency slightly. Uh, but is there an ideal radio for this, Chris? I know, I know you've done it just on a handheld, but... Is there a radio that's easier for this kind of contact? And uh, any comments on the, the Doppler shift scenario? Two E zero U K H. The digital analog hand. Two E one H W E. Yeah. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the question you you know you, you originally asked me. You know, any tips for doing it? You know, and that incorporates the Doppler shift and all other stuff. 
So my first answer was, you know, practice receiving it, knowing when to do it, when you know that it, the, the radio on board has been set to the ISS. So this, these are my best tips for doing it. So I just take a pip. There's a, you know, it's, re it's reasonably in depth, but I could teach you how to do it. You know, in a few days, in a, you know, you, you could be doing it this time next week if you wanted to. So I'll just take a pip, and then I'll go. Tips. So the first, the first, the first tip is what we said earlier. Find out what the radio on board the ISS is doing, whether it's sent to APRS or whether it's assigned to the ISS repeater. So you would just do a search for, just go, go to Google, Google and do a search for status of ISS. To do status of ISS. I did that earlier, and like I said earlier, at the moment it's assigned to APRS and it's set on uh, packet. And at the moment, the repeater is switched off. So, first of all, decide what it is, what the uh, what the radio on board is set to. So that's the first step. Second step, you can use a beam, something like an arrow antenna, a beam. And you know, and point it at it. When you know where it is, if it's a bright if it's a bright pass and it's not cloudy and you can see it, it's gonna be super easy, super easier because you can point it at what you can see, you know. So if you've got a beam, it is easier on a beam, although I have done it on a handheld. On the first week it went available, it went online. I was able to make several contacts on the space station, and I did a video on it called it called the Emitone. It was an Emitone 878 ISS contact. It was with a rubber duck and on four watts. But I did it. This is the killer bit of information. I did it at three o'clock in the morning. I went in my car, set up on a hilltop, and there's. Instead of 500 people calling at once, there was only three. So it made it a lot easier. I'll just OK. So that's the preparation. That's what you plan. But this is how this is how you program the channels. So I would, I mean, you could just set one channel. If you were lucky and there was no one on it, you could set just one channel with a received frequency of 437.8 megahertz FM and a transmit frequency of 145.990. Could be two different radios, one transmitting, one receiving. Transmitting radio has to have a PL tone of 67 hertz. You could theoretically just have one channel programmed, which is super easy, you're pointing the radio the area all the right way. So that's the easy version. I'll just take uh, I'll just pick there, and then I'll tell you the the proper way to do it. But theoretically, that is quite possible, and I've done that before, just with one channel. So uh, I'll just take a bit. So I'll just talk about the Doppler effect because it, you know, it's quite in depth. Um, the Doppler effect is three times more um, enhanced on UHF. And remember, we're receiving on UHF and we're transmitting on VHF. So it's perfectly okay. You know, we're going to we're going to set. Let's say set at least five channels that are transmitting on 145.990 with a PL tone of 67 hertz. All of the, let's say, all those five channels are transmitting on 145.990 with a PL tone of 67 
and they are receiving on a frequency close to 437.800. What we are saying is, as the as the ISS is coming towards you, you start on the higher frequency. So in my radio, the first the first actual channel I would use is listening on one sorry on um, four three seven point eight one zero eight ten. It's higher than the advertised frequency because it's coming towards you. The Doppler effect you're listening a bit higher. So I would set five channels. Start on the highest channel. I'll just take a pip. So the highest channel one uh, sorry, four three seven eight one zero and then as it comes towards you you're going down in frequency. All these channels would all be set up the same but with a different receive frequency. So eight ten for the start one. 805, you know, one, uh, sorry, uh, 437, 437810, 437805. As it's overhead, you, the receive frequency would be 437.800, you know, 0.8 dead. And as it goes away from you, it would be 437.795 and then 790. You know, and unless you're looking at it on a bit of paper, it sounds complicated, but it's not. So that's the Doppler effect. Start at a higher frequency and go down. And um, it's a lot easier, to, you know, to just to read it, just to read it off a website. I'll put I'll put all the information up on the Freestyle website. Um, and um, I'll ju you asked me about the radios, so I'll just talk about which radios I've done it on and which ones I know it works on. And how to and how to do on any any radio with a workaround. So the radios I've actually achieved it on and it works. I've made contacts. I've, I've made I've made loads of contacts. It's not difficult. It's super easy. It's just getting your facts right. So the radios I've successfully done it on are on the radio I'm on now, which is a Yaesu ST70. I've done it on your radio, Oscar, on an Yaesu FT3D. I've done it on the Yaesu FT5D. I've done it on the Yaesu FTM400, you know, with the, the colour screen, the mobile one. I did a video on that. So if it works on that, it will also work on the FTM300. Um, you know, a lot of people know John Micklaw, M-I-K-L-O-R, Micklaw. He's uh, he does a lot of a lot of not videos, but he does information on these Chinese radios, and he has got a code plug, you know, a list of settings for the UV5R for the Mayo fan. That works fantastic on the uh, ISS repeater. So UV5R, that that works fine. And I've also done it on the ICOM 705. And um, I'll just make one. This is any questions so far or input. I've got one last over, which is how to experiment with with any radio. You know, you using a couple of radios that you're not sure about. So uh, just checking your receiver. Me super long overs, and it, it's a complicated subject. But uh, in in practice, it's you know once you know what you're doing, it's not complicated. Yeah, we're still receiving, Chris. Proceed with your final, final over. Okay, awesome. So you can experiment, you know, with two handhelds. You know, you might not have one in the list, or you might not know how to program them. But you could just get two. Any two radios don't have to be handhelds or whatever. But it's easier because you're standing outside, or you know, it's either, you know, or, you know, if you are, or you're lucky enough to have. Um, you know, if you have a pass of the ISS and it's a very low angle of radio, you know, low angle 
a low angle pass, you know, like 20, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, a vertical aerial will work, you know, a, like a collinear. It will work because it goes off the side. You'll, if you've got a fantastic, hundred, you know, a, a, a pass which is going overhead, that won't work because you don't hear stuff directly above the aerial. You hear stuff to the side. So low angle passes are good. You can experiment with a couple of handhelds. You know, if you didn't know how to program them, you could have one one Bayo fan listening on 437.800 in VFO mode. Remember, you could adjust it with the clicker knob on the top. And you could have another radio permanent, you know, Permanently set to transmit on 145.990 with a PL tone of 67. So you could have two different radios. You know, the one you're transmitting on, you can turn the volume down. And you can sort of wing it with, with, with a simple setup like that. Just doing it in VFO mode. You don't have to set a channel. So practice listening and... Um, getting used to apps like ISS Detector to track it's going over. Anyway, back to you from uh, 20 UKH. 20 UKH, 21 HWE. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for sharing that with everybody. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people know what they're doing out there, but there's a lot of people who aren't so sure. So, you know, we like to, you know, break it down pretty simplistic for everybody because not everybody knows the knowledge. Not everyone's tried it, and this is what we do this net for. It's all to encourage people, share information, share ideas, and inspire people to try something new in the hobby. You know, that's what it's all about. Experimentation, isn't it, with, with, with amateur radio? So, yeah, and some really good tips because not, not everybody wants to mess around programming a radio with, you know, two frequencies. So that's a great way just to dip your toe into it. I think Chris is probably the best way of putting it. Just to get a feel for it, dip your toe in, and you start to gain confidence and enjoy it, don't you? And then you can get a bit more advanced as you go along. So, yeah, great great advice as always, and we appreciate uh, you coming on this evening there. Excellent stuff. So I'm just conscious of time. I've been running for an hour now. So I do want to open it up for uh, any fresh check-ins and also rechecks. So this is the part where you, you as the participants of the net, uh, get to ask a question or a comment. So if you've got a question to our panellists, and just bear in mind, we've lost Paul, he's had to go back to work. So we've got two panellists. We've got Dave, G-W-A-S-Z-L, who is a radio in space enthusiast, also of the Raspberry Pi Net. And we've also got the YouTuber, Chris Andrews, 20 UKH, who uh, has got some... Uh, experience in working the International Space Station. So I'm going to call QRZ uh, for anyone who wants to come in who hasn't already, and also any rechecks. If you want to recheck with a question or a comment uh, to our panellists, uh, we can see if anyone can help you if you've got a question, uh, or if you just want to say something, we like to hear that too. So let me know your call sign, slowly and phonetically. And, uh, yeah, we will wait your question or comment. This is 2 Echo 1, Hotel Whiskey Echo, calling QRZ. Uh, VK3 Echo 1, Hotel Whiskey Echo, Victor Kilo 3, Foxtrot, Tango, Oscar, Mark, in Melbourne. So, sorry, two people doubled. There was two people doubled. If I could take the VK station, that's all I got, the VK station... Not sure if you're new or a recheck, but uh, your comment or question, please. Go ahead. Yeah, VK three F T O M Victor Kilo three Foxtrot Tango Oscar Mike Tom in Melbourne. Uh, just uh, wanted to comment and say this is my first time transmitting on the Three Star Network. Uh, I was uh, actually scrolling around. Uh, here on Echo Link, and uh, saw Chris uh, to a zero UKH uh, uh, come up with a dash L, and I thought, hmm, I know that call sign. I've seen it on YouTube. So uh, yeah, uh, good to see that uh, that, uh, that there's a good active uh, net here. I'll right. keep this in mind for the future. 
And uh, yes, and going back to the theme of radio in space, um, there's, I'm fairly confident as well as the CubeSats, um, you lucky people in IAA U Region 1 have, uh, have a geostationary satellite, I think it's S Hale something or other. Anyway, I won't hold it, because I've got other Whoops, as I said, I won't hold it, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks for uh, indulging me and uh, coming up and letting me come up and say good day. Anyway, uh, 7 3 Saul, VKA 3 FTO, uh, Tom in Melbourne is going back to listening. Cheers all. Well, good evening, Tom, and welcome aboard the good ship Top Talk. Nice to hear your first time uh, check in, and uh, great to have you here on the Freestyle Network. We've been around for just over a year. Uh, going from strength to strength. Uh, for more information, do check out the URL. Uh, it's too much information to give you now, but uh, if you have a look on there, I'm sure we'll answer most of the questions that you may have. It is freestar.network. Nice, easy website there. Freestar.network is where you want to be. Uh, and there's nets most evenings, a uh, similar kind of time. Uh, I think the net schedule is just being refreshed, so uh, if you click on that, there won't be any net schedules because next week we have a brand new uh, uh, quarter one schedule to release. So watch this space, everybody. There will be uh, some new exciting nets in the horizon, on the pi in the pipeline, on the horizon. We will be telling you more about that on Wednesday, on the Wednesday night net with Bruce. So don't miss the Wednesday night net. That's when we were releasing the new schedule for uh, the spring uh, schedule there. Excellent stuff. Thanks, Tom. Seven threes, and uh, good morning to you there over in Oz. Right, there was another station that doubled. Uh, the other station, apologies, uh, let us know your call sign and your question and comment. The other station, Q Isaac, please. Mike 1, Bravo, and Jeff Kilo, recheck. Yes, this is Kilo, Kilo 4, Baker, Foxtrot, Mike, at Mod, Florida, with a question. And then 7 WB Portable uh, with a, a quick comment for you. Yeah, excellent. Right, three people there. So we recognise M1BIK. I've got you first. Uh, well, after Paul. So we've got M1BIK and KK4BFM in Daytona Beach, I think that is, US today. But before, because I know he's uh, short of time, uh, your comment, uh, panellist Paul. Harry Paul. MM7WAB. Uh, go with your comment, Paul. Over. Uh, cheers for that. Uh, yeah, just a quick one I thought I'd throw in there. Um, for uh, playing with satellites and having a listen around sats and stuff in space, um, if you've got an SDR, even one of those cheap RTL STR dongles, um, yeah, uh, you have a listen about on them. Have a look at something, you know, uh, Sat Droid or um, Heavens Above or something like that, you know. And that will tell you when the satellite passes will be coming over your area. And then have a listen on your SDR and you will see the Doppler effect. You will see it coming down in frequency uh, as it passes over. So, um, yeah, I've, I've worked a couple. FN sats with the Bofang handheld on transmit and uh, <laughs> just used the SDR on receive so uh, I could just uh, give the mouse wheel a little scroll to bring it back in into frequency as it's as it's travelling with the uh, set to account for the Doppler shift so uh, yeah and uh, web SDRs as well a lot of the web SDRs you can have a play on them uh, have a listen about at the satellite frequencies and you'll see them shifting on the on the waterfall. It's quite fun. Anyway, I'm going to have to go. I just thought I'd throw that one in there. So yeah, RTL SDR or any other SDR receiver or web SDRs, you can have a listen on them to get a bit of practice in. Seven three for now. Got to go. And then seven WAB portable. Yeah, two E one H W E with interjecting with that useful nugget of information there, Paul. And yes, web SDRs are a great source. I think they're overlooked sometimes, actually. Web SDRs completely free online, and uh, you don't even need a radio. You can be a shortwave listener, and you can still uh, enjoy that, which is great. Excellent. Thanks very much, Paul. 
Right, so we've got to uh, a recheck and a new check. So M1 BIK for the recheck, Chris in Chatham, in the Medway Towns, in Kent. Uh, your question or comment, please, there, Chris. Over to you. kilos. Uh, just a quick, just a couple of quick, very quick comments. Um, two things that you're in, the two things that absolutely are your enemy when you're trying to listen to uh, anything that's even remotely DX. So automatically, anything in space is DX. <laughs> no question about it. Um, it's noise. Um, and your biggest enemy on a, on, a, on a receiver is internally generated noise, and your second biggest enemy is externally induced noise. Um, so um, ideally, you want to try and get yourself the lowest noise set you can going um, to get the best, uh, to get your best to get your best reception. Because it doesn't matter if you have the world's growth now gain on the on the antenna. You know, there was a perfect antenna system in the world. But if your receiver is noisy, noisy internally, then you're going to hear a lot of things plus inter internal noise. And secondly, is um, get yourself away from as much um, environmental electromagnetic noise as possible. So ideally, go outdoors. Um, uh, normally, I would say avoid them like the plague, these like uh, the plague. But for this purpose, especially when you start messing around with UHF, um, high quality um, preamp, very very low noise, very very low noise preamp will uh, help no end. Um, Yeah, two E two E one H W E Mark One Bravo and your kilo. Uh return to monitoring. Yeah, M one B I K two one eight seven. Like like and question. share their tips and advice. So thank you very much for Chris. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You lost me a bit with the noise. It's far too technical for me. But I um, appreciate you uh, sharing that with everyone. And yes. Get out portable and do it. That might be an idea to reduce your noise. Go somewhere nice and quiet, out of the way, without any uh, electronic gremlins around, and that might actually enhance the experience. That's a good, that's a good, uh, a good tip as well. Excellent stuff. Thanks for calling in. Right next, I think it was. I think I got this right. I hope I have. Sorry if I haven't. But we're going across the Atlantic. We're going to North America. The first U.S. check-in of the evening. So good evening to you there. I think it's Rob or Robert in Daytona Beach, Florida, a place I've been to actually, if that is you. Hopefully I haven't got that wrong. And I think it's Kilo Kilo for Bravo Top Shop Mike. Uh, let us know your question or comment on this evening's net from 2E1HWE. Uh, yes, sir, net control. Yes, yeah. the call sign correct. This is Captain Bob, Kilo Kilo 4, Baker, Fox Shop Mike. The question I have, uh, I'll be just curious, um, if a user is going to uh, access the ISS, ISS station, should they first check the uh, aperture or perigee of the satellite? I would suspect if the aperture or perigee of the, of the satellite changes uh, drastically, that would, change, that would um, affect the signal strengths of the received station. Uh, that's the questions I have. Captain Bob, back to net control. Okay, well, good evening, Captain Bob. Nice to have you on the net. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it over to Bay first. Uh, Golf Whiskey A Sierra uh, Zulu Lima in Wales. Uh, and then what I'll do, Dave, if you could answer the question, uh, how you see it, and then hand it straight to Chris, 2E0UKH, for any comments if he wants to add any more to that. And then we'll hand it back to Rob. So, Dave, Chris, then back to Rob if you could. QW8. The L two one H W E. Yeah, from Golf Whiskey Eight Sierra Zulu Lima. Hi there, Captain Bob. We uh, we speak again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, if the uh, satellite orbit is uh, elliptical, then uh, yes, there will be a greater distance uh, between perigee and apogee. But with the International Space Station and the uh, 
all those satellites up there for amateur radio use, they're LEO, low Earth orbit satellites. So there's not much to change at all between the apogee and perigee of their orbits. So uh, with the current uh, satellites up there and the International Space Station, there's no, nothing to worry about. But if you went back to like Oscar 10 and, uh, you know, the, those type of satellites when they had an actual uh, really Law, you know, high elliptical orbit, like an inclination of 90, 89 degrees, or I can't remember what they actually were, but they were really, really elliptical. So, as I said, the difference between the perigee and the apogee was uh, quite considerable back then. But at the moment, um, there isn't any of them around. So, uh, uh, to answer your question, nothing to worry about. Uh, over to uh, Chris from Golf Whiskey 8 Sierra, Zulu, Lima. Yes, uh, 2E0UKH uh, returning. Yeah, no further comments. I think you've answered that. Fantastic. And uh, just just for the just information for Oscar, I have I'm starting two threads on Freestar website. Sorry, on Facebook page, Freestar UK and Freestar International. Start to keep posting some information. Uh, uh, about the contacts I've made, and then in the comments I will write in the details. So over to Oscar. No, no comments on the uh, on the question. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Excellent stuff. So Rob, does that hopefully answer the question? KK4 BFM. Over to you. Uh, next control, this is Captain Bob. It does answer the question. Thank you very much. I I didn't realize it was in a uh, low Earth orbit, but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, excellent. It's all good, and that's what we do the net for. It's all about people participating. We, we don't do the net for any other reason. We want people to call in with a question, with a comment. This will share the knowledge between us and get out of the evening. That's what it's there for, you know. Uh, you know, that's why I love doing it anyway. And yet, if anyone wants to check that out, Chris has posted a link to the YouTube activation that he did. Uh, you can check that out. If you're not already a member, please get on the Facebook, and we'll, let, we'll get you, uh, the admins will get you accepted in onto that. It's Freestar International. This is on the face ache, everybody. Freestar International, and also Freestar UK. It doesn't, doesn't really matter which one you join. They're both the same thing, really. Uh, and Chris has just posted the Anytone 878 Rubber Duck ISS repeat contact. So uh, that will help uh, give you an idea of how you can achieve it and uh, do it on a very simple, you know, basic antenna and radio, really, isn't it? So it's all good. Right, so we're at the bottom of the list, and we'll see if there's anyone else who wants to check in or recheck with a question or a comment. Uh, you just turned on your radio. Good evening. This is the Saturday night Top Talk Net on the Freestar Network. I'm your net control, Oscar. Uh, two Echo One Hotel Whiskey Echo, and uh, we're at 23:23 at the UTC or the Greenwich Mean Time. So uh, not too long left till we close the net. So if you want to come in now, please come slowly and phonetically, and let us know your call sign, please. We're listening for you. Victor Alpha 7, Golf X-Ray Mike in Coquitlam, Canada. Over. Mike Zero, Victor Uniform Bravo, Zero Video B, Shane in Nottingham. Golf Mike Zero Uniform, Uniform Bravo, it's uh, Graham here in Dunkeld, Central Holland, GM Zero. Excellent stuff. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for the check-ins in reversal with GM0UUB. From the International Radio Network, Mr. Graham Matthews. Dr. Nose himself, M0VUB Shane Bailey, from the Freestar Network, one of the founders. And also a brand new check-in, I think. I don't recognise your call sign. And we'll go to you first, if we may. Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, I think that is. Let me know how you'd like to pronounce that. In Canada... Victor Alpha 7, Golf X-Ray Mike, good evening to you. 
and let us know your question or your comment on the Amateur Radio and Space Top Talk Net. Over to you, Gabriel. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, hello to you and everyone on the net. It's uh, Gabriel, this is Alpha 7, called the Mike in Wisdom, Canada. Uh, I was uh, really enjoying the net, and I had a question if uh, Chris has an actual website or um, if Freestyle Network has an actual website or if it's just a, a page on the on Facebook because I was trying to get more information. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get a website. I'll just confirm it's just a page on Facebook because uh, this is my first time on uh, the net. Okay. Q1HW, well, excellent stuff. We've got two new, two new people have found us tonight. We've had Australia, and now we've had a new station in Canada. So the website is Freestar, Foxtrot, Romeo, Echo, Echo, Sierra, Tango, Alpha, Romeo, dot network. Freestar, dot network is the URL, so that's the first question. And in regards to Chris, I'll let you tell him about, I don't think he's got a website, uh, but you've got a Facebook page, haven't you? So uh, I'll, I'll let Chris answer that question. Uh, 20 UKH, uh, let us know your particulars, please. Yes, OK. Um, well, uh, the reason I was invited on here, I, I filmed a lot of contacts on the ISS repeater on my YouTube channel, Digital Analog Ham, and you can find me there. I've also started a thread, which is a, a start of comments on Facebook in the Freestar UK and the Freestar International page. So I'm starting posting threads on there, how to set up a Biofan, how to set up a Yesu. They're just links to videos, but I've done the work before, and you know it's an easy way to do it. I'm not here to self-promote, but people, you know, people like yourself want to get involved, or anybody, anybody can email me directly at 2e0ukh at gmail dot com, and I'll help anybody out. So uh, take your pick. I don't have a website, but uh, I've got a YouTube channel and I've got a Facebook group, and. Um, or I can answer any questions now. No worries. Sorry, uh, could I have the uh, email address again, please? Over. Yes, we heard somebody say over, and that was all. Go ahead. And it was uh, Victor of Seven Gothic Tramac. I'm just wondering if I could uh, have the uh, email address uh, uh, spell again, please. Over. Yes, no problem at all. No problem at all. The uh, the email address is my call sign, which is in letters, which is 2e0ukh at gmail.com. So saying it from phonetically, that's 2, two echo 0 uniform kilo hotel at gmail.com. 2e0ukh at gmail.com. Or you could just search for search on YouTube for digital analog ham ISS repeater, and that that will bring up all of my work in the past. Uh, Roger, thank you very much. Excellent stuff. Thank you, Chris and Gabriel, for uh, calling in. First time caller there on the Star Network. Please check us out. And uh, if you're not already a member, or well, I say a member, not really a member, but if you're not already in the group, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest nets, all the latest information, uh, it's a lot quicker to be in the Facebook groups than on the website. One more time, Freestar International and Freestar UK. Right, we move on down the list to Dr. Node, the famous gateway builder of the Freestar Network, and also... He's the guy who does all the digital. He is the founder, one of the founders of the network. So nice to have you on the net this evening. Have you got a question, Shane? Or have you got a comment? We're waiting with bated breath. M0VUB in Nottinghamshire, 2E1HWE. Mr. 
Zero VGV. Yeah, Katie, yeah, Oscar. Good evening to everybody on the net. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, and, uh, well, so now I'm trying to think of a question actually to be here, Oscar. Uh, in actual fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a little story. Um, and I suppose it sort of uh, relates to satellites and whatnot. But um, before I got into this hobby, uh, I was actually. Um, receiving weather satellites and uh, building <coughs> sort of antennas uh, for weather satellites and receiving um, images from the NOAA, uh, N-O-A-A uh, satellites and the uh, M2 satellites. And there used to be the M1 satellite as well, but I'm not sure if that's operational. But I used to receive images from these satellites well before I was licensed, actually using a uh, an RTL SDR dongle and you can pick these dongles up for next to nothing on uh, Amazon or eBay or wherever RTL SDR dongle and it's a little blue you know USB dongle you plug it in your computer comes with a little uh, antenna and whatnot but you can buy adapters and stuff to, uh, uh, to, to plug it into your main amateur radio antenna and you can use these dongles to receive satellites, uh, yeah, you could, you could in theory receive uh, the ISS and, and stuff like that. They're really good pieces of kit uh, for twenty, you know, twenty, thirty bucks. Uh, so um, yeah, I used to receive weather satellite images. I was fascinated with it, and I used to build antennas specifically designed to receive uh, those satellites. <clears throat> And we experimented with different designs of antennas, but um, I found, I'll just take a bit. Zero VOB. I found um, uh, the best antenna was the simplest antenna, in which it was a dipole, slightly shaped in a V formation, specifically cut. Uh, 137 megahertz, which is what the uh, these uh, particular weather satellites transmit on. As they as they come over, uh, they they take photographs of of, of the Earth from uh, from their orbit, and then uh, transmit them. And um, fascinating it was. And I built antennas, all different shapes and sizes, helical antennas and all sorts. But the the, the most effective antenna was the V-dipole, um, and yeah, I was receiving uh, images, you know, from space, I thought it was fascinating, and that's what sort of got me, that, that, well, that was a, a contributing factor in getting me in the hobby of amateur radio, so I found other stuff on the SDR as well, I used to use it for, uh, for listening and stuff like that, you know, listening to stuff, but I've also used uh, the RTL SDR for receiving images from uh, the ISS. That also transmits SSTV from time to time. Uh, there was there was a, a recent um, a few episodes of it uh, transmitting SSTV, and it still does to this day. So that's uh, that's just a bit of a story, really, Oscar. So I'll pass it back to you from M0VUA. Yeah, Mike, you're a bit to Uniform Bravo 2 Echo 1 Hotel Whiskey Echo on the Top Talk Net returning to you. And you know what, Shay? We haven't even scratched the surface. There's so many other things we haven't covered. We haven't covered the weather satellites, so I'm glad that you brought that up. That's fantastic. Uh, we haven't covered Moon Bounce or Earth, Moon, Earth, EME. Uh, there's loads of other things that we haven't even had a chance to discuss tonight, so we might have to do a, a part two, possibly. Uh, but no, I've just looked at these dongles, and yeah, they're about £35 off Amazon. Obviously, there are other stores you can probably get them on. And you, you, they're actually great, aren't they? And uh, I've got a question for you, actually, on this. You know, who is this data? Is it, you know, are you allowed to hack into this? You know, is it ethical? Is it legal? Is it free open source in that respect? I don't know if that's the right term. Probably not. But you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, you know what, what is it up there for? Is it an amateur thing, or is it just... Some other commercial entity just let anyone get into it, or could you just give us a bit more meat on the bone for that, please? Uh, M0VUB. 
Yeah, Missouri. Be, be returning. Well, I believe they're up there for um, free public use um, for various weather observation um, uh, strategies across the world. Um, they, they put lots of weather satellites up there, and there's some, you know, closed closed source weather satellites. But these satellites are open to anybody to receive. There's there's, there's nothing legally uh, that I'm aware of that you can't receive the uh, images from them. Uh, the the NOAA project, I think that ended the, quite a while ago, actually. So the, the software became a late, available to actually uh, receive the images from them. So, and you can openly download this from the internet uh, for the NOAA satellites. And people still receive images daily, you know, and it, 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 it don't pass just once a day. It pass like, you know, three or four times a day. So, uh, and it's really, really good sort. You know, it's really interesting seeing live, or pretty much live, images from space and receiving them on your own equipment that you've built, especially with an antenna. And and it's it's very easy, Oscar. It's very easy to receive these uh, satellites. The M2 satellite is a little bit more difficult because you've got to do, uh, you've got to have a few... Yeah, you've got to have, it's just not one piece of software for that. You have to use a range of pieces of software to decode certain parts of it to get the full image at the end of it. But the M2 satellite image quality is pretty good. The NOAA satellites are a bit more uh, of an older technology. But they're still up there and they're still transmitting. And uh, you only need the modest antenna to receive them. Uh, a V-dipole, the best antenna for receiving weather satellites. And that's what I found. Um, and you just cut it for 137 megahertz. I'd, I'd, I'd suggest anybody research, do a lot of research before you, uh, you dig yourself into it. But you can, you can get into this, you know, receiving the images quite cheaply. It'll cost you less than 40 quid. You know, get a, if you've already got a dongle, then yeah, go for it. It's a really good, uh, it's a really good thing, uh, uh, to add to the, add to the bow. So, yeah, completely free and completely, legal and completely available to uh, uh, to receive Oscar back to you. Two E one H W E. And I'm just looking it up now actually and uh, I typed it in and they actually start from as low as fifteen pounds. So what's that? Probably ten dollars US, something like that. So that's crazy, isn't it? How can they how can someone build something like this and ship it for fifteen quid? It's unbelievable, isn't it really? Uh, and I know you've got to find the right antenna, but it says here uh, it's probably the most useful thing a hand can spend £15 on, a USB dongle that plugs into your PC, and with the installation of a piece of free software, you can have a powerful SDR that receives signals from 24 MHz up to the gigahertz range. Uh, and thank you to Essex Hand for that information, uh, essexhand.co.uk. You just type in uh, the SDR dongle there, the RTL SDR dongle, there's a whole links, information, software, download. It's really good, actually, to put that on there. So, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. I appreciate you calling in, Shane, to uh, add, uh, add that there. Uh, I'll hand it back to you one final time before we bring Graham on. Have, have you thought of any questions yet? You don't have to answer a question, but I thought just out of common courtesy, I'd just see if you had any for our panellists this evening. One final time, m 0 you do. Yeah, I suppose the reason I suppose it could uh, com complement what I've been sort of speaking around on this uh, this QSO, and that's is uh, if anybody that's listening on the net has ever uh, played around with receiving weather satellites. And um, no, you're absolutely right. The RTL SDR dongle, which is basically a BVBT receiver. And they're cheap because they're mass produced. Um, they're, they're a mass produced item. And not, they're not actually designed for SDR. They're designed for receiving TV. <laughs> but the thing is, they've got a, an exceptionally good receiver in them. And not only can you use SDR, but you can actually use it as a piece of test equipment as well. Believe it or not, Oscar, my repeaters uh, were set up with an RTO SDR. Uh, so they're very, very good all-rounders, and I recommend any ham have one in the drawer, that's for sure. 
big time. <coughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Arco SDR. For anybody that's so interested, get one. The cheap and yeah, they're really, really good. Really good. Uh, you can you receive all sorts of stuff on them. Yeah, including up, up to in, into the ranges of the gigahertz. So uh, there you go. So uh, yeah, has anybody uh, played around with weather satellites? Back to you, Oscar from M Zero B and uh, thanks for running now. We'll be calling uh, at the end. Cheers. Well, thank you, Shane. Excellent. Nice to uh, get a different angle on it. So I'll just leave a pause. Is there anyone uh, got any experience with the weather satellites or wants to add uh, any comments before we move on? Uh, please come now. Let's know. Golf Whiskey 8, okay, the arrows are a little M1 BIK, uh, pass your comment. 31 HWE, Mike 1.0, No, I was just going to uh, comment about, uh, about, um, Wefax, uh, or Weatherfax, as, uh, his, uh, which is the underlying system that you know, NOAA and other weather like the weather satellites use uh, to um, for transmission. Uh, it's possibly the, the underlying uh, transmission system, it's not very well known, but it's possibly about the fourth oldest um, seven B protocol still in current use. Um, is in fact it's a uh, it's a very old version of the uh the uh, transmission protocol is a very, very old version of the system that um which is originally used for sending photographs uh around the world over to over telephone systems and radio, better known as wire. So you know, we look at our wire system, um I don't know what I'm talking about, but one fact is just a very, very bold version of that. So making about the fourth oldest protocol going, still in current use. Two G protocol going in current use. Two E one H W E Mike one five zero and your kilo. Yeah, thanks very much, there, Chris. I know uh, Dave just wanted to add something there. Uh, one of our panelists, G W A S. L, oh, God, what's the matter with me? It's always too late in the evening, isn't it? It's nearly midnight. <laughs> G, G, Golf Whiskey 8, Sierra, Zulu, Lima. Well, I say phonetically, Dave, I'm fine. <laughs> Forgive me, quarter to 12 in the evening, I should be in bed. Right, Dave, uh, do you want to add one final uh, comment on the uh, weather sat conversation? Then we're, we will get to you, Graham. Stand by. Uh, over to you, Dave. Yeah, from uh, TW8SNL. Yep, Shane brought back memories, but, uh, you know, I'm talking about many, many moons ago before either, you know, it was RTL dongles. I remember modifying, I can't remember what it was, um, to get uh, and receive, I can't remember radio it was, actually, to receive the NOAA weather satellites. <laughs> I think, but I'm not sure, I think I had to use a discriminator airport. It was that long ago. But I did get there in the end, but I just can't remember exactly how I did it, as I said. That was ages and ages ago. So, uh, a lot easier with the dongle, I would uh, suspect. Okay, that's my only comment there, uh, Shane, but it brought back memories. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. 2 w one to hwe 2 w one to Echo one Hotel Whiskey Echo returning. Thank you, Dave. And... Just uh, had a comment come in on the text. So just to let everyone know, Harry Paul is at work, MM7WAB, who was our pan one of our panellists earlier this evening. He's just put a comment in to let everyone know, do not use more than 5 watts into a 7 DBI gain antenna for uplink to SATs. A few transponders have been fried by operators throwing more than 25 watts EIRP at them. Be careful. He's also said, get the RTL SDR version 3, okay? So get the RTL SDR version 3, the best people to get it from, he says. Uh, obviously, other stars are available. Other stores are available. I wanted to stress that. But the one he 
recommends himself is rtl-sdr.com. Avoid getting the fakes on the online stores. So there we go. Proceed with caution. Apparently there are some fake ones out there that are very cheap. Your best one is the RTL SDR version 3, apparently. I've got no idea I've never used it. But thank you very much, Harry Paul, for your comment on the text. Uh, right, Graham has been incredibly, incredibly patient. So I want to know, Graham, your question or your comment for the evening's Top Talk Net, if you've got one for our panellists out there. Uh, GM0UUB from the International Radio Network. Good evening from 2E1HWE. Uh, 2E1 HWE, well, uh, Oscar, <laughs> lovely, great Ned, great Ned, great Ned, uh, lots and lots of lovely comments and uh, wonderful participation and all the rest. So, uh, no, I've just got a couple of quick comments here, uh, Oscar, if you don't mind, sir. Um, you know, sometimes people wonder about the old uh, kind of Doppler effect we were talking about before. Hey, listen, when we were kids, um, when, a, when a car passed by us, did we not make that noise? and off we went into the distance and uh, that's it of course it started off at a higher frequency because when it's coming towards you it's kind of squeezing the wavelengths together and it all sounds a bit uh, higher than it really is and once it passes you um, when it's going away from you it's stretching those wavelengths and uh, that's why it sounds a little bit a lower in frequency and that's the Doppler effect there you go so we uh, just wanted to point that out but uh, anyway <laughs> I think Chris did a great job at uh, actually explaining that before so um, this is all kind of redundant um, but uh, Chris also mentioned the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the app you can download the ISS detector now uh, I just wanted to mention uh, there Oscar um, I've got the ISS detector. I started doing some satellite work last year, and um, hey, honestly, the ISS detector is not just about the ISS. Goodness me, no, it's got all the different satellites there. Um, so uh, if you manage to download that software and go, go onto that the app, um, it's wonderful, and uh, it gives you uh, all the passes of all the different. Uh, satellites, not just the ISS, but the other satellites that you can uh, uh, use, um, um, you know, go through for radio, and it gives you the, uh, the angle, the, uh, um, the, uh, the direction, and everything else on your iPhone or your uh, smartphone, whatever it may be, you have to use. Absolutely wonderful. So, um, so there you go. So the ISS detector, just in case people thought it's only about the ISS, no it's not. Um, all the different uh, amateur radio and other um, uh, satellite um, operations are uh, uh, included in the app. It's absolutely wonderful, so we go and check that one out. And uh, so there you go. So, um, yeah, well, that's it, Oscar. I'll pass it back to you, sir, um, from CM0. Yeah, thank you, Graham. 21 HW, Eva Turk. Just uh, listen to a bit of YouTube in the background, don't mind me. So I'm playing the famous Telstar on a keyboard. No copyright infringement occurred, just uh, in case anyone's was listening. But uh, that bit of music just uh, brings it all back. Telstar, uh, one of the satellites, wasn't it, back in the 60s? Uh, Joe Meek as well, there we go. A bit of nostalgia. And yes, you're right, Graham, you are right uh, about the Doppler effect. The old, uh, I thought the one I remember is the... Uh, uh, the police siren, isn't it, of the police car? That's the one I remember anyway. Uh, you know, the Nino Nino. Uh, but it's all good in the hood. And uh, there was something else that I was going to mention. But I can't remember what it was. <laughs> so I'll hand it back to you one final time for any more comments there, Graham. GM0 UUB, 2E1 HWE. Well, no, that's, uh, I've got no further comments at all, Oscar, and uh, obviously, uh, well, I, I don't know, I've, I've never been myself uh, chased by uh, the police with all the sirens uh, glaring and all the rest, 
maybe that's just an experience that you've had on your own, Oscar. So, um, anyway, um, because you're here, um, I presume you're not um, a transmitting from a prison cell, you must have got off with it. But, um, no, I've never been chased by uh, police sirens myself, but um, you've had some experience. Well, we'll just have to put that down to uh, history. Do we zero? H-W-E, or no, uh, echo one H-W-E, sorry Oscar, um, uh, GM-0, U-U-B, seven threes for now. To Echo One Hotel with Skeko returning. No, I have got a clean uh, record, no criminal activity around these parts, Graham. And uh, we're, as you normally say, it's a man in crook, isn't it? That's the normal gag on a Friday night. <laughs> Not guilty, officer. There's nothing to see around these parts. Anyway, we digress, we digress and move on. And we're at the bottom of the list, so I think I'm going to start winding things up. This will be the final opportunity before we close this net at midnight. For anyone else who'd like to come in and join the Saturday night top talk net on the Freestyle Net this evening, if you just joined us, you've nearly, you've nearly missed it. But uh, there is one final opportunity to call in. We're talking about amateur radio in space. We've been talking about satellites. Uh, we've been talking about cube satellites, the International Space Station, APRS, a bit of slow scan TV, weather satellite. And we didn't even get a chance to talk about the moon bounce or any other bits and bobs there, so uh, maybe we'll have to bank that for a night. But the final time, if you'd like to check in, this is your opportunity now. Please come slowly and phonetically with your call sign. Let us know who you are, where you are, and uh, you've got an opportunity if you want to make a comment or ask our panellists a question. So final time, QRZ please, this is 2E1HWE, listening for any final check-ins. Whiskey 5... Alpha X ray. Whiskey 5. Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Alpha X ray. Gate side here in Texas coming through on an HT this season. Victor Echo 7. Lima Echo. I say again. Victor Echo 7. Lima Echo. Ted. In Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. Coming by C4 FM, wires next. Excellent stuff. A flurry of activity, lastminute.com. We are loving this. And both from North America, good evening. To uh, Greg on RF in Texas, Whiskey 5, Foxtrot Alpha X ray. Nice call sign. And also Ted in British Columbia. In Richmond, Victor Echo 7, Lima Echo on the C4FM Wires X connection. Excellent stuff. We just see, is there anyone else? Anyone else? Final call. Final call. QRZ. Mike Juan Bravo and Jake Hilo, recheck. 2 dy VK2 dy Robert Inton. Okay, apologies. The uh, Upper North American station, please slowly, phonetically and twice, you were cutting off there. I didn't get any of it, but I know there was another station. I think it was North America. That other North American station, again, please. This is Papa Uniform before Papa Sierra Mighty from Brazil, South America. Delta Yankee. Just to try to be helpful. GM0, EB. Okay, I think I've got it there. I think it was a Brazilian station, or South America, apologies, not North America. Papa Uniform, Papa Sierra. Right, excellent stuff. Right. So, good evening to Whiskey 5 Alpha, uh, Foxtrot Alpha X ray. Great call sign, by the way. I like that one. Good evening. Welcome to the Top Talk Net here on the Free Star Network. Hope you're doing okay there. Uh, we're at five minutes to midnight in the United Kingdom. So uh, let us know your comment or your question to this evening's net. From 2E1HWE. Hello, Mike Conrad here. Hello, Well, since it's five minutes before midnight, I'll have to say uh, good morning. Anyway, uh, Whiskey 5, Foxtrot Alpha X-Ray, Greg here from Texas. 
just uh, throwing it that way across the pond, uh, giving it a shot. Thought I could, so I thought I'd try. Anyway, got the HT out in the uh, front yard this evening. We're pushing everything. It should be about five and a half, seven watts or something like that. Don't really have any questions or anything like that. Just uh, like everything to do with the hobby, like listening to uh, everybody out there. And uh, haven't got into listening to the satellites and stuff like that on the, U, uh, on the SDR stuff. Planning to real soon. Anyway, 73s to all, top of the day. Good morning to all. This is Greg, Whiskey 5, Foxtrot Alpha X ray. Back to you, which way? Excellent stuff, Whiskey 5, Foxtrot Alpha X ray. Well, thanks very much, Greg, for your positivity there and calling in. And it's not quite the morning yet. We have three minutes to go, so uh, it is still definitely the evening, but just about there. And uh, yeah, you're coming through the uh, personal or the public mode or the gateway uh, of AG5EG, which is a guy called Ray uh, in uh, Conroe, I think is the pronunciation possibly there, in Texas. That's a great RF connection. We see that connected most evenings. Uh, I think it's on, by the looks of it, 70 centimetres maybe. I'm not quite sure, but uh, there we go. Nice to hear you calling through on the RF this evening. We're down the list. We're going to Canada to uh, a little bit further north. Victor Echo 7, Lima Echo, which is Ted in Richmond. Good evening, Ted. Uh, hope you're okay. And uh, any space activity that you've participated in? Uh, and if there's a question or a comment, let us know, please. VE7LE, from 2 Echo 1, Hotel Whiskey Echo. Good evening over there. Good afternoon over here. This is Ted, Victor Echo 7, Lima Echo. You can look me up on QRZ. You ask about space activity. Uh, yes, after Boxing Day, because like, uh, like you do in the UK, we also celebrate Boxing Day. Uh, I was decoding the uh, pictures on SSTV from the uh, ISS and I got my certificate for that. But my question is, does this group have a Facebook page, and if so, what it is? And I do have an, uh, was an RDL, SDR dongle that I used to use to uh, monitor, uh, to track uh, maritime traffic on AIS. But now I don't do that anymore. And so I was wondering, where can I get the software to monitor it using the Raspberry Pi on Linux? So back to you guys there. Yes, your call sign got cut off. All I heard was two Echo One Hotel and cut off. Control. This is Ted Victor Echo Seven Lima Echo. Okay, Ted, the call sign is 2 Echo 1 Hotel Whiskey Echo. Honolulu Whiskey Echo, and good morning. It is midnight exactly here, 000, zero, zero UTC. And I know a man who can answer that question. He is one of the hosts of the Raspberry Pi Net, which is on the Three Star Network every Sunday, which in this time zone is today. Think about this, Dave. <laughs> You'll be on soon, uh, not too far. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi net is at 2200 every Sunday here on the Freestyle Network in the UTC time. And uh, I reckon he's the man to answer this question for you, uh, Ted. So Dave, G-W-A-S-Z-L, microphone for you to the question. Yeah, this is uh, Golf Whiskey 8, uh, Sierra Zulu Lima. And good evening uh, there to the, uh, to the station. I'll ask the question. Um, uh, the, oh yeah, it's, it's Ted, Victor Echo 7, Lima Echo, I just had to call up by the, uh, the screen here. Well, if you're looking for an AIS receiver, uh, you can actually, uh, there is a daisy hat, as it's called. Uh, it's an AIS receiver for the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's called, as I said, it's daisy hat. I haven't tried one myself, but um, 
it's a uh, it's a true two channel receiver, so it, can re it actually continuously receives on uh, both uh, AIS channel A and B, which, if my memory says correctly, is 161 decimal 975 megs and 162 025. If I got them wrong, it gets late. But um, yeah, look for do a search for uh, Daisy Hat. That's Delta Alpha India Sierra Yankee Hat, as in Hat Hotel Alpha Tango, just like a Pi Hat. And uh, there's an AIS receiver for the Raspberry Pi. And uh, back to uh, Victor Echo Seven Lima Echo, and I hope that helped. Okay, thank you for the information. I guess you misunderstood me. I used to do ISS on the Raspberry Pi using my RTO dongle by using uh, well, some failing software, uh, the operating system for the Raspberry Pi, so no extra hardware was required. Now, I want software to monitor other frequencies using the RTO. At, uh, where I can plug it into the Raspberry Pi and monitor everything from 0 to 2 gigahertz uh, that particular software. And I was wondering where I can get that. So my email address on QRZ is also valid there, uh, which is my three-letter call sign, which is Victor Echo 7 Lima Echo Echo, my last name at Shaw.ca. So, uh, yes, you can send me later on so we don't tie up the net here. This is DE7 Lima Echo on C4S. Yep, okay there, uh, uh, Lee, uh, Ted. And uh, so it's getting late here. Yep, okay, I just, uh, I, I know exactly what you're looking for now. I thought you meant, meant uh, Alpha India Sierra, the uh, maritime tracking system. And uh, uh, so you misunderstood uh, what you said. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll send you an email with a couple of links and uh, you should be sorted. Oh, okay there, uh, Ted, go ahead. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, for time reasons, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to take any more check-ins or rechecks. But we've got the last one on the list uh, in South America. I think it was Brazil, but you're not coming up on QRZ.com. I've probably got the call sign wrong. Hopefully, you know who you are. But the Brazilian station, I think it was Brazil. South American station, I think it possibly was Papa Uniform 4, Papa Sierra Mike. Uh, let me just clarify your call sign. Uh, let me know who you are and your question. Welcome to the net. Okay, final call for the Puppy Uniform 4 station. Are you still with us? QRZ. Nothing heard. Well, that's a shame. That would be nice to get a South American call, but it wasn't meant to be. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, everybody. I will have to close the net now. It's six minutes past midnight and the Fed is calling. It's been great this evening. Uh, we've enjoyed talking uh, all things about amateur radio in space here. Uh, with our panellists, we'd like to thank again uh, the Hairy Paul, uh, Mike Mike 7, Whiskey Alpha Bravo in Scotland uh, for coming on and talking about the uh, cube satellites. Uh, also, from Wales, uh, GW8SZL, that's Dave. Uh, who is a radio and space enthusiast. He also runs the Raspberry Pi Net, uh, which is tomorrow. And also Chris Andrews, the YouTuber from the Digital Analog Hand YouTube. Uh, we want to thank him as well. And in traditional Top Talk style, the final word of the evening does go to the guests. Uh, I know Paul's not around, but we're going to hand it over to Dave for one final comment to close the net, and then we'll hand it to Chris. So GWAS. Uh, ZL for the final comment from 2E1HWE. Yeah, from uh, Golf Whiskey 8, uh, Sierra Zulu Lima. Um, BK2DY was actually uh, trying to get in. I don't know if he's still uh, still connected there, Robert from Sydney. Uh, he doubled. I did pop it in, uh, in the aim window. But uh, I don't know if he's still there. Maybe you might want to uh, give him a quick uh, call there, Oscar. Great, Ned. Thank you for the invite. I enjoyed uh, every minute of it. Uh, with that, I'll pass it back to you, Oscar, from GW at Asselo.
Okay, thank you, David. Apologies, due to NetLogger. I am a new NetLogger, and I've just realised uh, there are people on there uh, making comments. So apologies, I've not even seen any of these comments. Uh, I've missed them all completely. So apologies, anyone who put a comment in NetLogger. It's all new to me, and I didn't even realise there was a little window where you could read everything out there. So again, if I've missed anyone, I do apologise. Uh, but for time reasons, I really do need to close the net. Uh, but before we do, Chris, if you're still there, final comments, any final words you want to tell anyone before we uh, go QRT? So 30UKH, any final comments, please? Over to you. Yep, 2E0UKH, uh, for the ID. Well, I'd like to thank you for doing the net tonight. Very enjoyable, very informative. I've learned quite a few things. Um, really have. And, uh, you know, anyone who would just like to get started in doing this, just practice listening. You know, we, the ISS is on, you know, you've got a few frequencies you can use. You can just listen on 145 800 for the actual astronauts, you know, that's the actual frequency they use, you know, with school passes and in their own spare time. You know, you can listen on 437.800, that's the ISS repeater. And learn, learn, when, learn when the space station is coming over. Learn how to use the ISS detector app, um, which is free, and you can, you can find out when it's coming over. Practice listening, get that down, and you'll find the rest a lot easier. OK, 7-3. Great now. Back to you, Oscar. Well, thank you, Chris, and appreciate everyone's time. Uh, you know, not get, getting guests is not an easy thing. Uh, we have to send a lot of emails out, do a bit of hustling. So I appreciate everyone coming on the panelists, three regular pal panelists there on the top till net. And uh, also thank you to all the participants that called in with all the comments and the feedback. We do appreciate it. And uh, I think someone said, uh, one of the callers took up to answer their question. I think it was... Uh, Either Greg or Ted said about the Facebook. The Facebook is uh, Freestar International. That's the Facebook page, Freestar International. If you're worldwide or if you're in the United Kingdom, it is Freestar UK. Excellent stuff. And uh, the website, one final time before I run out of steam, is freestar.network. Happy days. Right, the next net, I think there might be a Canadian net on uh, in a few hours' time here on the Freestar Network. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow we have the Trans-Canada net. I think that is at uh, 1,800 hours UTC, approximately. And then we have the newly licensed net tomorrow evening. Uh, that will be at 2030 UTC. 2030 UTC, the newly licensed M7 net with Keith M7BYB. So lots of nets here on Sunday, which is today here in this time zone, and hopefully you can join us for more very, very soon. Uh, we'll be back again next week. We will be doing the uh, Top Tool Net again at the same time, 21.30 UTC, and we welcome you to call in for the next net that we do next Saturday evening. Anyway, I'll stay seven now. Thanks very much to everyone. Uh, this is 2 Echo 1 Hotel Whiskey Echo. Oscar? Now closing the top talk net, and we wish everyone 70 free and a pleasant time, evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. 2E1HW, now closing the net at 0012 UTC Sunday morning. God save the Queen. <laughs>